Yeah, for sure. FYI, I am live. Sorry, I uh, pushed the button without thinking about it. Hmm. Good. Oh, how was your day, love? Oh, um, I do whatever. I just figured I'd stream for the hell of it. Fair enough. That's fair. Need some music. Okay. Alrighty. Bring this knife. I am here and live. Welcome, welcome. So, um, <laughs> weird way to open this up, but I did want to apologize because I feel like I maybe didn't communicate everything the best. But, very sorry. Um, yeah, it's more or less <laughs> like there's no expectations on any of you, on either of you to do anything, anything like that. I just, you know, mm -hmm. want to have like a fun podcast episode with you guys. On, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, let me adjust audio levels real quick. I noticed in my last last stream I was doing, I had a terrible bit of uh unfortunately qual if you end up listening to this i'm very sorry um <laughs> you ever update your discord and it changes your audio settings yes yeah so i have to deal with that almost every night <laughs> yeah so that happened and unfortunately it completely they didn't mute koala but like man a very quiet man it was very very quiet Oof. so <laughs> Set this to my background. Boom, 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 boom. Guys, once again, we are in a transition period for the channel, so I do not have a just a blank screen to put us up on. So 
Yeah, Where I still started. need to get overlays, man. I'm so far behind. <laughs> Honestly, same. What? I thought we got. I thought like that was like literally a. Like, well, thing. I like, meant. Yes, we have the the pre-purchase ones. I meant getting like some backgrounds and stuff that are custom. God, you scared the shit out of me. I'm sitting like, wait a second, what? That was literally <laughs> no, a gift. No. no, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat actually. Like, I really need to get. Um, like, I'm uh, they're being made, but like, I I'm I'm very excited for them. They should be coming up pretty soon. I was talking to Stormy recently. So, mm -hmm, sorry, I'm adjusting some PNGs. We're using my desktop. Like I said, boys and girls, if you're, if you're watching or listening, listen, I know it's a little bougie, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Alone. Embrace the scuff. Scuff podcast. Embrace it. No scuff, no Echo has the, uh, like the uh, one that a lot of the Renpy ones use for like the anime game for like the walking home. Like, it, it works. It works. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like one of the default backgrounds in VTube Studio. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I know that a lot of the Ren P games that I've played use have that as like a walking home at night kind of like yeah. alleyway. So it's like, yeah, it's, I think it's like an open license image. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like not trying to insult it. I'm just saying it's like it's it's gotten around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reminds me of my third wife. So um, oh. I was actually just thinking, you guys, you guys just brought up a really a really cool idea. Like, what if we were to like do this kind of thing, but like like do a podcast, but like do it in VR chat. That'd yeah cool. i mean really we, cool. we did that with that we did that before uh with uh like you you can always like get rolling as like there's a couple streamers that make uh uh that they're like not not the entirety of their channel but a, a portion of their channel like a talk show like like think like uh like craig ferguson kind of thing like and then they'll bring on people talk with them then talk with their chat do fun yeah. things and bring on new people it's uh, funny it's funny you mentioned craig ferguson specifically that's a part of the like reason why I even started doing this, like or why I'm <laughs> even testing this out is like not really trying to cop his style as much as it is like draw inspiration from it. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've hosted some podcasts in the past and it was a lot of fun, but it was audio only. And I want like, obviously we're using PNGs right now, but like, that's not, that's not always going to be the case. And like in the future, I want to have like, you know, like, fuck it, have some fun avatars on screen. Everybody like come and chill and like talk. It'd be awesome. I mean, if you wanted to, if I had done, you'd want to do that, I could have, there's actually a setup on the VR chat built in, uh, just a native thing that lets you treat its in-game camera that you take pictures and videos with as a web camera. And I could stream that to Discord and then it would literally just be me in VR chat. And then you can, I mean, hell, like, I literally could take like a five minute break and go into VR chat and just chill. Yeah, and you'd have but, a, uh, a video stream, just add to your, your stream. That's really cool. Might have a little delay with the way that works. Like, if we have a small break anywhere, I'll literally set that up and do it, because why not? It's funny. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, man, let's get into this. I don't even know. So this this, this is the thing. Is, as both you know and I've said a few times, like, you know, we're just kind of fucking around different formats. Like, all this is just kind of a pilot episode. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, let's talk business. Real shit. <laughs> How do you guys like spaghetti? How do, 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 do you guys like spaghetti with meatballs or meat sauce? What's up? What's going on? Tell me. Spaghetti. Tell me right Spaghetti's nice. Spaghetti. I always do it with meatballs. I don't mind. I can do tomato sauce, meat sauce, uh, meatballs, sausage, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I like I like sausage, meatballs, and when I was little, I always wanted the little ones, or not not tiny, but like the end of your fork size. And now it's like, oh, no, it's all about give me that the, just the oh. the giant ones. Yeah, hell yeah. It's like a sausage yeah. meatloaf. Like, <laughs> give me okay, a not meat quite that, but you know, I'll, we, we can do that for you, Deck. I'll. I'll... <laughs> Give me a meat apple on top of my a noodle, meat please. Apple. Oh, that's that's a word I did not think I'd be hearing today. A meat apple. <laughs> nice. Think about the size. It's about right. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> apples come in many sizes. It's cool. <laughs> okay, so so if we got Granny Smith apples, what, what's that one going to be called? <laughs> hmm. uh, I don't. I don't know. Hmm. I don't. I don't know like... if we want to meet Grandma. <laughs> meet Grandma. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I'm being hydrated. Okay. Uh. But yeah, so <sighs> I had to get that smooth drink question out of the way. However, you two. Let's, yeah. let's, let's get into some let's get into some damn history, some damn homework, my favorite subject. Yeah, whatever you so, want. So homework isn't a subject, it's a thing that all the subjects homework. Here, yeah. 
is a subject for me because I subjectively don't do it. Anyway, so um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so based on history here, right? I mean, how long how long have we known each other now? Like, mm-hmm. cursive, I've known you a few years, and then Deckel, I think maybe maybe a few months less at most. Yeah, because I joined on uh, Final Fantasy for a while shortly after. Yeah. yeah, what was that? Three years ago or two years ago? Because I think I played for a year. It's been it's been mm-hmm. a few for sure. Yeah, yeah I think it, I think it was three years because it was my older sister who uh, had asked it as a uh, I didn't have a whole lot for for a Christmas gift, and so she said, "Well, play Final Fantasy with me." And then she right. ended up quitting and, and going to another another group and stopped playing with me. I was like, "All right, then I guess I'll go find my own fun, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by that point, you were already indoctrinated. You were here with the rogues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, boys and girls. Fun fact: uh, my smooth brain ass has ran several guilds over the years, and uh, I actually met these two lovely individuals through one of them over on Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was a few years ago. Whenever I was so bright-eyed and a you know little little rap scallion, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> that was actually a lot of fun. I don't know. I I've been burned out on MMOs like the last like forever though like yeah. pretty, pretty much like since I quit playing yeah, same. like I recently I mean, picked up the older public but meh I miss WoW but I specifically miss my Demon Hunter and like Legion and it's like all their like go- throwback servers like don't go to Legion and also like I don't think you'd have all your stuff and that was a big part of what I loved about WoW was I had a lot of the achievements I had farmed up a, a lot of rare stuff out of all the like, I literally had stuff that just wasn't in the game anymore that I could use for transmog. And so it's like... <sighs> yeah, it's yeah. a lot of effort. Yeah, I know the feeling. I hopped on Swator recently. I was doing a, I was doing a collab with uh, Katori, right? Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> Check this out. Through the beauty of peer pressure, right? Um, Katori, who's never done, like, a full asshole dialogue campaign in uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Yeah. So, like, what I mean by that is not, like, an like, not not necessarily an evil campaign. Like, just picking the rudest option in dialogue every possible <laughs> right. choice. And so, like, we're playing, and I convinced her to do it, and it led to her murdering a Twi'lek. And, like, <laughs> it's all on stream. There's a clip of it where I was just like, oh, my God, dude. I, I fucking bait and switched her. I was like, do it do it and then, and then she finally did it and then i was like oh my god you monster how good you like, <laughs> you were the scream palpatine <laughs> wow but yeah i think i think that's been, <laughs> i think that's been like the latest mmo stuff that i've been playing personally but i haven't done any mmo since 14 fair yeah thinking of the star wars stuff i'm just like curious if there's the uh if you guys have that in like in the back of your mind like are you, are you like like you realize that there's going to be some point where it's going to be like and i'm not even speaking from like spoiler i'm speaking just like 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 from a writer looking ahead kind of thing where it's like there's going to be some part like dark corridor and like a lightsaber illuminates at the other end and you realize shit just got real <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to it like if there's i'm not real big in uh and especially in tabletop to like do the whole sacrificial play like that's not usually my deal you I'm gonna tell you right that. now. I, I'm gonna tell you, I, yeah, for sure. I didn't want you to die. All right, you can, if, from a meta perspective, you can ignore, you can ignore DR. Like you can ignore it. <laughs> it's gonna be easier for you to kill them than me. It's better I die and you live. So. Oh god, yeah, that those freaking pollutions. Oh my god. And I, that's, that's immediately what I was thinking too. It's like these guys don't even have like like lightsabers or anything when those things hit the field we're gonna be crying it's gonna be oh my god someone's losing an arm <laughs> yeah like i didn't want to be too like too far meta but like the moment you said i bypassed their dr i was like oh fuck like these guys have damn we are level two this is a problem like these are the weak <laughs> ones that reminds me of the iron gods campaign a little bit oops <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> just hitting this thing with like 10 hardness and where it's like well it would be nice if we could hit it with anything else <laughs> <laughs> so actually why don't why why don't we get into some of this huh so so you two have been dating forever right Very yeah long. yeah how long how, how long now how long has it been left uh like 16 years <laughs> no yeah. shit, really that i knew it was i knew it was like around i thought it was around 10 
to be honest. I knew it was a long time, but I thought it was around 10, 16 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Hell, how, how did you two meet? Second life. Well, technically, uh, um, writing a website. Site. Yeah, yeah it's a, it was a role play website that was based around, uh, like, I mean, without going too much into it, just like changes and transformation stuff. I mean, go figure, the trans, the trans girl would be there. I don't know what Drew, Drew Deckel to it originally, but um, the. And then there was a chat function that we kept seeing each other in. And uh, then uh, a mutual friend, I believe, because that was Koki, I believe, who got, got us in, into, got a, or I don't know if you, you were already there. Yeah, I um, think I, it, I can't remember if me or Koki suggested going there, but. Was uh, it you? I don't, gosh. Uh, I know that the first thing we did was I uh, went and got you a uh, Vixen model. Yep. Got a Fox Girl avatar and uh, <laughs> it was uh, gold and white and because uh, I wanted to get one off of a uh, piece of art that I loved and so we found one that looked like it and made the eyes look like the right color and everything because it didn't have the right color eyes and I remember being really stuck on that. <laughs> so but... was, this like, was this just like a website that also had chat rooms or was this like, 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 did, like what, what was the site? It was stories and chat rooms, yeah. Yeah, you could write your own submissions, and then it had a chat room function that you could join. Oh, okay. So like you were, you, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to grasp. So you had like this avatar like on your profile, and it would just like be like whenever you spoke, or no, oh, the Second Life was... itself is oh, more like the art chat. Second Life. Okay, I'm sorry, well, I'm tracking. The first that. one that we <laughs> met at was was uh, was a one that has some. Uh, I mean, there's some adult connotations with it now, but it used to be kind of half and half uh, before, but it was just CYOC, choose your own change. Um, and it was kind of like, and all the chapters were written like like they wrote in chapters so then other people could Battery jump in with a new story. Granted, some people were really defensive of their stories. Even the idea of you adding an alternate chapter offended them, but I had been writing on that for even years prior to that. And I just never used the chat function. And then uh, I started hanging out in the chat and I met Deckel and then we started getting on Second Life together. And who who made the first move? Who shot who shot their shot? Uh, that's a good question. Uh... I think I think you kind of let it because I generally I mean my personality is usually to stand and watch and figure out where I fit in with the situation and then go at it and then like and then start moving once I feel comfortable. And so it's like I would imagine it was probably you. And I that's think it was true. because you were doing there was like a chat game that you were like that would do kind of like how they have in their redeems they have a little thing for a little section of writing and uh Deco would do that with just everyone and it was a little game where it just basically be like you know transform transform or like you know do something like you know like you know tell like you know who was your first crush or something it was just a chat you know it's what are you what are you doing That's and wonderful. so Deco would then like think of like you turning into like you know like maybe a dragon cowboy or something and so you, you I also enjoy I'm fully cheesing about this i love this <laughs> like every ounce of this is wonderful big fan i mean i didn't really make a move per se but i was doing that and then no yeah we went to second life and like the first time we were there we ended up talking into like four or five a.m so yep. <laughs> hell yeah and then it love just kind of grew from truth, there truth be told on that one there there was actually we weren't even like I mean, we were just trying to hang out. We weren't like trying to get all, all romantic and, and, and such, but uh, <laughs> I was looking for a 16-bit fire. I got um, you, Quala. Also, welcome uh, to the stream. I didn't want to interrupt them. <laughs> but the uh, it was just one of those things. That, I guess you know it's not the worst one. It's just the I didn't usually talk much about myself, and there was a different situation going on with me. So I didn't. So I was specifically trying not to get. Uh, overly involved with anyone but me and deco clicked on such a level that that kind of surpassed that and it's funny how that works right <laughs> right you're not looking but it just happens yeah well and it's like i was i mean for all intents and purposes actively trying to resist because of it because i didn't think it was something that could be pursued i was still in the mindset that trans wasn't really an option like i mean not to throw them under the bus but like you know south park had kind of gotten in my head with like the whole like mrs garrison like that's what trans was and so it's like I didn't think it was an option, so I didn't. I didn't want to burden somebody else with me, you know. Mm, yeah. Which is one of the other things. That's why it's like I. <laughs> why I think it's very important just that people have the right support and know that they can pursue what they want to do, 
No, you're yeah, goddamn right. Like, you know, you, 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 you're completely correct. Like, people should have the freedom to express in any fashion they feel fit. And, like, that that expands to every part of life. Like, there should be no yep. limitation to that. Like, yeah. don't... The, the only limitation, the only amount of, like, prejudice there should, really should be against an individual is, are you an asshole? Are you doing something that's, like, harming others? If so, right. then stop fucking doing that. But, like... Is, your, is you expressing your freedom infringing on something of someone else's? Are you causing harm? If not, then there should be absolutely no reason you can't do that. Yeah. Agreed. And and to be to be honest, since, since we're on this topic, I just want to say, Curse, I'm deeply proud of you. From, like, day one that we met until now, it has been huge strides and honestly couldn't be more proud fan fucking tastic <laughs> well now you got me blushing <laughs> it's true though like no no it's true i'm not gonna obviously i told you i was beforehand like we're not gonna get super super specific about stuff but like you know like i know that you've been building confidence and i know that you've been showing out more and i know you've been like gaining confidence in that, and that's huge like there's a lot of people out there that like you know, they don't know if they can do that until they see someone else do it. And you being the person they can see doing it is fucking huge. And even if you don't realize it, you can be impacting a lot of people and helping them show and express themselves in ways they couldn't normally do. So, like, that's huge. And you should be deeply proud of it. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that so much. You have no idea. Yeah, of course. Okay, Sin, for you. Da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about this also. So, like, I've not, I've like, I heard about like those getting <laughs> drown mommy love. Let's go for sure, koala for sure. So, uh, I heard about like those becoming a problem, and then stopped hearing about those becoming a problem. It like, was all, almost like, immediately. A couple of viral posts of people saying reading it into the Twitch rules, but nobody's ever really shown any evidence that that's a thing. Oh, it's so dumb. People that's like to so stir dumb. the shit and cause drama. It's like... Well, because I remember, like, I, I told you both about it, but it was mostly just, I had no idea, so I was like, hey, heads up, yeah. don't know if this is real, like, maybe look into this. Yeah, I was concerned about it when you first mentioned, but then I could see, like, a couple of bigger streamers had still had it going, so I was like, okay, these ones are usually fairly on top of the rules, so... I think if you're right. going, you know, like full ASMR, sexy time, it might be a problem. But eh. yeah, that's <laughs> different. Like if you're just like, like, like full shots fired. If you're just going to be Amaranth for like four hours and you don't have like the pull <laughs> with Twitch to get away with it, then like, yeah, for sure it's a problem. But like, <laughs> but yeah, like, <laughs> anyways back on topic a little bit so the both of you like i said we've known each other for a few years now and i wouldn't be sitting here uh looking at my chat and laughing about the fact that koala has a little sunflower next to his name and i think it's adorable <laughs> it wasn't for both of you right so i want to know what exactly like i'm aware <laughs> i'm aware of your personal motivations but like what, what what was the push like what was the actual like when did you actually pull the trigger on like deciding to like start content creation and why like why did you decide to actually start doing it like everybody talks about it but like what what was the actual straw you know what i mean you want to start i mean i can if you want um i would actually say it was precisely a year ago uh it was on i mean literally two days uh on or two days under a year ago because i think it was the fifth johnny had tfm johnny when i say johnny uh, had made a because we had talked about it and it was kind of like the pipe dream and it was like never really fully realized and um, TFM Johnny made a collab video with a bunch of people a couple who we've had the absolute delight to meet like uh, uh, Adzi Slayer and such um, that helped uh, make a collab video to True Colors uh, they made a Kind of a slower kind of ballad kind of version of it and it was gorgeous and it was beautiful and it also showcased vr chat and seeing that it's like okay they can move how they want it actually spawned something less kind of pride based but it was just the fact that you can be what you want and you know like one big one was like love is love you know stay true to yourself and and one of the things i thought of and i looked at that and it was much smaller was just the 
I could use that to DM with because like w like literally I was listening to it as I was DMing at one part and I was the players were being obstinate at some part and I I just I was I, I had made the mention that you can't see it but I'm flicking you off right now as funny as that is <laughs> so it's like and then I stopped and thought about it because it's like I've seen some of the avatars in the VR chat videos that like you know Johnny or or like B which put out where it's like they can flick off and I was like wait a second, I could probably run D&D &D from, like, I, I was thinking of rudimentary setting up something to make it think it was a, a webcam and stream it to use it like that. And, but then we started talking about, well, maybe we could just stream this. This would be kind of fun. And then it kind of grew from there. But then when it did, Deckel, I mean, was very, very smart with, like, the, well, we should plan it out. We should look at it like a business. We should make sure to register it to ourselves and, like, you know, okay, now how are we going to do it? Are we going to do it, like utterly duo we're gonna make two of our own and make them side by side what are we gonna do and deco was exceptionally right on every front yeah it's 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 wild to think you know <laughs> deco somehow being incredibly intelligent or something that's super crazy <laughs> <laughs> that was never a doubt in my mind but <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I, around. I uh saw you know i kind of looked at how other people were doing it and basically um, I knew we needed to go and get our name secured on all the socials. I knew you needed to use social media to progress on Twitch, having done it before and not gotten anywhere. Um, so yeah, I just started basically. I, first thing I knew was we needed reference art because, like, if we're gonna do a VTubing or streaming, and I know camera streaming wasn't an option for what we wanted, so uh, went and got art and started uh, just promoting. Yeah, we did field research. We looked up uh, streamers, found out who we wanted. Not, I mean, more than just Johnny. It's like, Johnny's great, but he does his own thing. And like, you know, it's like neither of us is exactly uh, singing talented. So it's like, okay, so where, where are we going to make our mark? What are we going to do? What was a conversation we had. So we started doing what we affectionately called uh, market research, which is actually where we ended up meeting Pepper. We met Pepper's whole crew there and a bunch of people through, the, through them. Uh, and so it's like, and seeing how successful they made themselves and how nice of communities they made which is one of the standout reasons of why like you know i ended up really like enjoyed hanging out with pepper uh like in every chance i get even st since then um but it's it's just interesting because you see that they like cultivate a level of kindness and and, and such and it's like yeah there were some parts of it that i that i like for the one that i knew that i wanted for like my aesthetic but it's like the big part came down to the community and then that's where we had the conversation about stuff like you know where it's like well i definitely want to make sure that anyone lgbt is feeling safe i want mental health to be a thing because it's something i struggle with so i don't want the i don't want the stream to feel like that's an unthink unsafe thing to talk about at the same time that also became a thing because it's like well you there's also things about that you have to be careful about both legally and ethically you know, so we made right, sure you don't to want to be like misconstrued as like a psychologist right. and everything. Right, exactly. And things Both like legally and like, you know, you don't want the person thinking you're a replacement. It's like, but at the same time, like anyone who's gone through like any of the self help steps or like, you know, gone through like the darker edge knows that, well, there is a step where like your friends intervene between you being alone and you going to the doctor. And sometimes you never make it to the doctor stage and you still can get over it too, which is, it's like not that it's recommended, but I mean. Right. Well, so it's I mean, like having a good friend whenever you're feeling that kind of dark whenever you're feeling that down like that's unbelievably helpful so I mean, of course yeah and i wanted to have a positive community i think quality is better than quantity absolutely 100 percent. like you can be edgy and get a bunch of attention but it just generates i don't know bad but feelings yeah, the... you gotta keep being an edgelord to be successful <laughs> Yeah, hey, you don't want to make a channel where you can't be yourself because then you're gonna to have to put on that face every time you go on and so it's like if you if, if you live that way and you can make a community doing that way like being that kind of troll then i mean by all means like it's like but you know not everyone's built that way and not everyone's gonna to want to go find a channel that does that you know yeah. right and the more i've gotten into this right the deeper i've been getting into twitch uh and like the deeper i'm getting into like content creation and like kind of like recognizing and pointing out the hustle of it right mm-hmm like, the more I'm realizing that, like, to be honest, a lot of those, like, and I'm air quoting as hard as I can, a lot of those, like, edge lords, like, like, the ones that are, like, really trying to sell that persona, yeah. like, that's kind of not sustainable at all, like, in any facet. Like, it's not really, like, 
No, they you always end up going overboard and then <laughs> getting canceled or something similar. It's it's either that, and then even the ones that like hold that persona for a long time, right? Like yeah. their long time is usually about half the longevity of someone else who's just being comfortable, like someone who's just simply being themselves and like just trying to do their own shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I've already mentioned Johnny was kind of a big inspiration for me for. I, I can't do the kind of content that he does, but I want to have that kind of interaction with people. Oh yeah, the way that he talked with his fans in between the music was also a huge inspiration because it's like there's no reason it can't always be that warm and like fulfilling and like also just expressing how much just anyone and like just being there and just there's only so much human human condition you can feel through a screen, but you can try to maximize it and make sure that they feel it too because like. And not just the, the sweetness, but the humor and the fun. Thank yeah, you for the gifted it. sub, Sin. Hey, thank you, Sin. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I fully agree. And like, the, you know, it's it's remarkable. Like, I've spent, I don't know, I, I can be extroverted, but it's not comfortable, right? I've spent a long time being in very uncomfortable situations in real life. And so, like, I don't know, it doesn't do well for me. And I don't like being on camera i don't like showing my face so like vtubing was very it was like a glove and whenever i saw you two doing it and like having a lot of fun more than anything i was like oh you know what i'll give it a shot and i don't know it's it's weird but it's very nice finding like a good like a good balance to like interact with your chat like finding like i don't know how to put this like it's finding a way to express emotional content through your voice Mm -hmm. And like by emotional content, what I mean is like, just, you know, like being genuine and like being able to express that without having to have someone see your facial expression or without having to have someone like, you know, there for you to like touch their shoulder or whatever. And for them to get the point that you care. Yeah. And like, it's possible. And it's just, it's very, very fulfilling when it happens. So. I always knew you'd be a good fit for it. And it's like, not just it, but like. There, the, the one that made me know it was like after we had gotten started but before you kind of like went went like full bore into it it was we were playing deep rock galactic and it was literally like I th like i think i even i think we had a conversation on it where i just basically said like it's like you could literally like host a channel or this and it would be so entertaining just to watch just you and like <laughs> yeah. it, it was just because it was more like it's like we had like real talk we had like we we had goofy talk we had like like, hey, watch me, like, watch me do a flip kind of, kind of chatter. And it <laughs> was just very fondly on, on a few of those missions. Like there, there was one in particular where you and I were in an ice level. We we're doing an escort and we were in that mission for an easy two hours, easy two hours. Cause we were bullshitting <laughs> and we were just talking about life and it was awesome. Like that was, that was really nice. <laughs> yeah, that in Grand Theft Auto, like the amount that that you and I meshed in Grand Theft Auto, like, and not just like the uh, like the the super organizational of of our um, reviews of the heist that oh, Red Dead never had, um, but Red Dead, give me crime! I am a fucking cowboy. Give me crime! What are you doing? Right. <laughs> give me crime! God damn it! We literally went on Red Dead and like hijacked our own train to like pretend we were we were hijacking a train because we were like why is this not a thing that's the Damn biggest train. that's the biggest disappointing bullshit of all time like let's play a game right where where the entire premise right the entire storyline is debatably the greatest like western robbery storyline of all time okay but then we're gonna give you an online version we're gonna do the same shit but with your friends right also we're gonna hold the crime well, you had the best point of it. When we did that, you literally said that it's like having Grand Theft Auto with no cars. It's yeah, like, like, what the fuck is the point? With what no do I cars do and that? no missions, really. Just freaking, <laughs> like, world world events. That's all you get. <laughs> like, we mesh so well in, like, just the heist aspect. But, like, we were literally... There's, I literally have a video still on my YouTube of just where we were flying and we, we so yes we were doing it yeah where you jumped out of the helicopter and got like beach volleyball spiked into the asphalt and it was <laughs> unfortunately you can't hear my half of how hard we're laughing but you can so hard. you can kind of you hear it a little bit through your mic and you can infer it by how hard you're laughing because it just keeps growing because it's like oh, i was God. dying i was literally <laughs> i was choking by the end of it 
Yeah, that was that was a solid forty five seconds of no breath, like, for <laughs> sure. Like I, I had tears. That was, that was like, good yeah, it just started with just like the little, just like oh, I forgot my health hel- or my uh, parachute, and then you just spiked into the asphalt at the speed of light, and it's just like, <laughs> well, because like GTA, the, like anyone who's not familiar, hear me out. Hear hear me out. Uh, cursive knows like I'll, I'll be in shotgun in the in like the helicopter and usually the way this goes is whenever i'm playing like gta or something i'm usually boots on the ground running people down and it's great yeah however uh i jump out of this helicopter and the way gta works anyone unfamiliar is as soon as you jump out if you have a parachute it's immediately on your back like it just appears on your back right I hopped out, there was no parachute, and then I got fucking spiked into the ground like, like they were trying to score at a tournament. The blades of my helicopter, because I was in the midst of landing, and Chris just had the tendency to dive out and then dive down a little and then open it to get down sooner, which is fine. Like he said, he was the master of being on the ground, whereas I was pretty damn decent with the with the aircraft, so I like to stay in the air. <laughs> but yeah. Where's my parachute? Uh, yeah, I immediately died. It was one of the funniest deaths I've ever had. I set my controller down on my desk. Like I didn't like drop I, it. I just placed it down my desk. I, was like, I can give you a link to it if you want to show your chat it. I can. Yeah, absolutely. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking funny. Oh my god. I'm but so- yeah, I I fully agree. And like a part of I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. A part of my motivation for getting like uh like VR set up and stuff is so we can play more heist games specifically. Oh hell yeah! I wish Payday worked better on VR. That was yeah. Does it I mean, work well, on VR? Pretty well uh, there's apparently a mod that you can run around like VR chat on with it, so that's what we need to get because uh, one of the people at our uh, group was in here. Deck, I'll send it to you. So if you want to do it on yours at the same time, you can. Lisa, there, there's a mod that Lisa lets you run around. What, like, what, what do you mean? Like, do you, are you not able VR to run chat, around? Normally? Yeah, you you can only you have to hit a button to turn, and it always turns a set amount. You can set whether it does 10, 20, or forty five. Oh god! Per- <laughs> and then you you uh, cast yourself like you do in like the Rick and Morty game, which is not good for an for a game where people are shooting at you. You can still dodge physically, so when uh-huh. they're shooting at you, if you dodge, they will miss. But yeah, yeah, that's so. Yeah, it's that like sucks. the first generation control scheme for VR games. It kind of blows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let me pull this up on stream real fast. Boop, 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 boop. All right, and then I'm going to just very quickly <laughs> hide our reactives. Don't worry, boys and girls. Don't worry. You're gonna break it off. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, maybe might just do that. Okay. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Fully died. <laughs> Fully you, died. You were dead bro. before you hit the ground. Damn. One hundred percent. You rolled just backwards. Instantly into the blades. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped out. I jumped out. Went into like the the pose for falling, and then as the tilt happened, it threw me backwards. <laughs> It spiked me down. Oh, that's that's fucking funny. <laughs> oh my god. That was a good day. That was very. That good was day. amazing. <laughs> it's also, because we we made a lot of money on those days. We made more money than like, like. <laughs> we really did. We had that. We had that one. What was it? Ko Perico. We had that shit down to a science. I remember one day we finished and we realized that we made more in that day in a span of like six hours than you could possibly buy with the most expensive shark card. And yeah. we were just like, God damn, that was worth. Because it was yeah. still a lot of fun. It's like, yeah, it was it was like six hours of work, but it was yeah, fun work. Six hours of chilling. Like, it was six hours of, yeah, and like it's not like we did it like constant like grinding. It was literally like us just chilling, shooting the shit. And, and then I blew it all in an arcade and I regretted it. That's kind oh, of. Oh, God. The arcade and the, the fucking casino heist. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's kind of the whole thing. idea of going into VTubing, right? You still work, but you uh, enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like the best job. <laughs> that was very random. I wanted to say yesterday morning when College Diploma finally came in. Oh, nice. Nay, very Congrats, cool. Koala. Hell yeah. Did you, you get that it. shit framed. Right. Send it to me. I'll laminate it. Oh, and no. Then oh, no. Put it in my house. I'll keep it for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Do a job interview. Hey, look at my very generous diploma. <laughs> already done all right bet see you soon <laughs> but yeah uh <laughs> hmm so um 
speaking of VR stuff, boys and girls, there's a there's a very good chance that I'll end up getting a VR set up sometime in the near future. I've got some other other ducks to get in a row beforehand, but nice. it is something that will possibly be going on. Looking forward to it. Right. Speaking of that, yeah. Uh, did you did did you want to did, did did you want to damn talk about site sixty seven or should we or should we not? We can you can if you want. It? Yeah, so like how did all that come about? Like like tell me tell me the origin story cuz everybody who doesn't know Cursive and Declan De- Declan you've also moved up really fast in Site 67, didn't you? Uh barely so, I guess. Yeah. Declan is an NCO and it and I have recently been made been made a site director of Site 67, a role play group uh in VR chat for the SCPs. Uh fandom, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, but how it started actually would the only way to really uh, say that is Gunslinger. Uh, there was he's changed his handle now. He's something else. I think it's Ghost Tactical. But uh, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Gunslinger76 who literally, when we were hanging out with the friend group of uh, Pepper, um, would talk about it. And like every so often, he would have to go because they were doing an event. And so it'd be like, all right, see you later. And then there was one part where we were just hanging and he had to go and he started talking about the, yeah, I got to go to briefing. And I, you know, if I skip it and, and like, you know, I won't be able to do the event and then, and, and so he just started talking about it, showing off some of the avatars and they were obviously well-made and they were fun and a bunch of like, and I knew Deckel like, you know, being, you know, into the, like the hobbies they would like, as far as like, would like some aspects of it. And I didn't mm-hmm. know how much they knew with the SCP stuff. So I ended up joining first because I, Gunslinger was really hoping I would. I kept saying no, and then finally I was like, "All right, I'll go to, I'll go to basic. I'll, I'll join one. I can't say how long or how much I'll, I'll do, and it will, it'll be fun." Um, but it was the basic itself was fun. There was a there they went through basically the rules of the role play group, and I met Faze, who's uh, one of the captains in that group, and he was exceptionally. Uh, Fun to uh, work uh, to work under as he uh, went over their breaching tactics, and then uh-huh. that was also shortly after because I think it was with De- Deckel too. So that was after Deckel had joined. Was when I approached you because I thought Deckel you were with us, weren't you? Yeah, Deckel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because then I that's when I came to you and said, "Hey, can you come on this game and like show me what they mean?" Because like there there are certain parts of like the breaching. Like I'm curious of why do, why do you actually do this in reality? Like because Right. The people who made the training for that are ones from, like, you know, uh, ROTC or, like, you know, SWAT. And so uh, we actually get to learn, like, you know, nothing like, you know, classified or any of that, like any of that. But then, and then it also made it extra fun that you and uh, Ark, uh, Blemmit, uh, also, uh, like, pitched in all this extra knowledge of stuff that I could learn from. And it actually made it, I mean, just a bit of a hobby for the first month. And so it's like, I get to read about that. I read about the SCP lore stuff because I browsed over it and loved the creepypasta aspect of it. I loved listening to, like, the uh, stories or reading the stories. Uh, yep, full disclosure, I plan on bugging your ear whenever I get two more follows and I hit that 200 for those readings. I was going to put a bug in your ear about any good SCPs out there for some creepypastas for me to read on stream. Oh, absolutely. There's a couple. That were, there's some with major stories. Uh, I could tell you right now uh, a couple good ones, but it'd probably be more fun to, to uh, tell you off stream so you, yeah. Can, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you could surprise true. everyone with it. And then also, I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is not even a spoiler because I want you guys to know, okay? Part of the hype, right? Whenever whenever that reading does happen, guess what else we read? We read in the fucking Garfield Mass Effect fanfic, all right? We're reading <laughs> the whole fucking thing. <laughs> By the way, anyone who's, not, <laughs> anyone who's not familiar, it is in terribly broken English. It did not translate oh, no. well at all. It is the worst, and I love it. Can't wait to read it. It's going to be great. Oh, it's... That sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know of one SCP that's a beautiful story that will make you cry. So, <laughs> well, hell yeah. We'll, we'll discuss I like feeling it later. feelings. Yeah, we, yeah, should, sure. we should we should put that one on the list too and have you read that one because yeah, that I know, I know exactly which one you're talking about because I can't even think about it without getting misty eyed because it's like fucking a. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Get get at me a little bit later about that. Yeah, Katori, I'm not joking. Garfield Mass Effect fan fiction is a thing, and I'll be reading it. There are 200 followers. Also, welcome to the stream. Glad to see you. I mean, when you think of all like the stuff that you've seen of like fan art, that's like the really creepy, like why does humanity do this? And you need to realize that there are probably more writers than there are artists because art, like a lot of people get really like you know self like, but people will write a story about whatever the heck they feel like. 
Well, also, like, I feel like there's... I don't know. I don't know if this is fair to say, actually. I feel like... I feel like trying to translate one's thoughts into, like, a story versus, like, trying to translate one's thoughts into an image. I feel like it, it takes a different kind of person, right? And so, like, yeah. I feel like there's yeah. more people that are akin to that. Like, well, not saying that it's not, not... Not saying that it's easy to do. I'm saying that there's more people that are drawn to the aspect of, like, I don't have to, you know, like, try and draw this this figure perfectly right you use words every day you don't use drawings every day so of course even the most a mundane like you know novice writer is going to be better at it than say like the most mundane novice artist would be a drawing so yeah, it's I, like <laughs> the most novice artist is me by the way i can't draw stick figures <laughs> yeah i'm not very good at drawing <laughs> i i can write stories though i can draw a little bit yeah, I just need to practice right. to get better at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bad at it. If I, if I draw a stick figure, he is an amputee. I'm going tell you right now. His legs are not going to be even. His arms are not going to be even. It's going to be a bad time. But, yeah, I actually... Uh, honestly, honestly, I've been trying to not broach this topic, to be honest with you guys. I've been trying to not broach the topic of tabletop. Because I don't... I know that the both of you are deep in a tabletop, so the last thing I want to do is like talk about it this whole podcast and like burn the both of you out. But <laughs> not very tough talking about it, but go on. But I will say some of my favorite stories and narratives have been coming from my tabletop experience with the both of you. Right? And it's been fantastic. Like and Deckel, I don't know what it is. I don't have to I don't have to discuss the it's really it's really it's very strange. In, a, in the best of ways, all right? Let me, let, me, let me explain this, all right? Let me explain this. Okay. So, in the best of ways, it's very strange that I don't need to say anything to you for you and I to be on a similar vibe as to how in the hell things are going to play out, generally speaking. Like, yeah, example. E exactly. But, like, example, like, you know, uh, we did that really cool thing where we both got, like, you know, we were both taking advantage of attacks or opportunities and, like, killed those two stormtroopers, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, like, just other things like <laughs> I like I don't know I don't know how to put it it's very nice it's very nice like there's there, there's some native like like synergy there I really appreciate that because like yeah. don't even have to say anything about it, it just kind of happens I am curious if you have any other favorite moments you'd like to share because that makes me very happy uh, and I don't actually I cool. told it that often uh, yeah well alright so alright so first off huge fan of Mummy's Mask uh, big fan of the whole concept. Monkeys. Like I haven't, <laughs> monkeys. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's been reflecting. At least to like, I'm mostly talking to my chat at the second. I, I I don't know if it's been reflecting on stream. I don't play serious characters in tabletop. Um, my bread and butter has ever been the comedic relief, and so like, you know, ex a prime example, Crimbus Bumblefern, my current D and D. Oh my god! Yeah, character. that is. <laughs> That is my shtick to AT. Like that is that is my that is my comfort zone. Your Goliath and Krista's game. <laughs> yeah, my, my Goliath and Krista's game for sure. But like playing a character like Sarik, where I'm intentionally trying to be socially awkward in a world that's already fucked off, is uh, it's just it, you do a really good job of world building, right? And I haven't had a, a moment in Mummy's Mask where I'm like, I know exactly what's going on next. Like it's not been like that. It's very fun. And like the whole like Five Nights at Freddy's thing that you did, like the, <laughs> the shout out to like Five Nights at Freddy's, and then it immediately dropped Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so good. I'm glad oh. you enjoyed it. I had fun doing that. Like, and I love that I knew Nikki would be playing with all the sounds on. And so I knew, because I played that at the just above off sound. Just a little, just that, because I knew that was going to get her. And I knew that would immediately put the right theme in the heads. And it's just that it's just a laugh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cursive is definitely the best DM that I've played with. Hands down, bar none. Hands Thank down, bar none. Also, one of the best teammates I've ever had in tabletop, for sure. Because I think at this point right now, how many how many games have you DM'd for me, Cursive? Two? Three? Two? Two. Two, I believe, yeah. And then you and I'm trying to think how many times we've been teaming. Unless you were, yeah, you weren't in Dragon's Dogma. I keep thinking you were, but you weren't. No, I wasn't. Because I got, rolled, got rolling after. I didn't have the opportunity. Right. So I'm trying to think how many games we've been teammates. And we were in Chris's game. We were in Ark's game. We were in 
I think it was more than that, wasn't it? Or am I going crazy? Was it just the I mean, two? my characters can't even remember. I think it was just the two because I had the I had the I Chrono think... Chronomancer in, in Silver Wolf's game, and then I have uh, I had my Drow Ranger in the uh, in Planet's game. Oh right, and then our current game, our fifth head game. And you were in yeah, the so Halloween game, right? Yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and <laughs> I fully fucking died in that in that in that in that game. It was super fun. You brought the sisters of Dathomir to a Halloween game in Star Wars, and I cannot applaud you enough for it. I, <laughs> I had so spiders, bats, witches, and ghosts all in a Halloween game that was properly themed for Star Wars. I was so proud of that that game and how I arranged it because it's like, and it made sense. Fit yeah. with the lore and still had a, an interesting twist yeah hats off to you by the way about your star wars like world building like i i know i've said it a few times i've been quietly like cheesing like i'll mute myself and cheese for a little bit about like some like just very minute details about like your world building or other aspects of what's been going on and like I mean, as far as like favorite parts of like as far as like favorite parts of like just general sessions that i've had with like you as my dm specifically or no 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 just generally me and you in tabletop uh, okay so like grim talking to the fish mocking you was one of my favorite ones in that campaign as well as like um oh my god what was that <laughs> why am i spacing right now curse of is a very good dm um no so what was that god damn it who was it that was at the bar but they were projecting their voice inside their head and they were drunk singing all the way down the street that was uh Cephist, and he had gotten the a telepathic crystal from the uh the mind flare ship in the uh frost maiden campaign that's right and so he was a goblin for everyone to know he basically started singing uh when he got drunk at a bar and so he started singing and then projecting it to everyone within 60 feet because that's as far as it went for him. And the townspeople had figured this out because they figured out that, well, he wasn't doing it audibly. And if they stepped 61 feet away from him, it stopped. So the whole town basically left him at the fountain. And then when he finally realized that everyone else had moved 61 feet away from him, he started screaming, singing the song. And it was just <laughs> so funny. It's so fucking good. <laughs> it was so <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I got us free drinks by freezing uh, liquid in time, because I had a spell that let me freeze an object in time, and so it just and it would just stay there till I cast a spell again, and then, so, uh, I literally like, and then we at one part we stacked a bunch of coins on it, and then put one real coin on it that wasn't frozen in time, because then we told the bartender like, hey, I bet if you pick a coin and um, pull it down from it, like you know, because it was for the next night, we had get, had free drinks for a night, and then Cephist uh, actually had the idea that if uh, okay, he's gonna hide a normal coin on it and then we bet the bartender if you can pull a coin off of it uh you, you know we'll pay like you know like three times the amount for all of our drinks and we'll drink a lot tonight um and then if but if, if you can't and i can then we get free drinks again and sure enough the bartender <laughs> i wasn't aware i wasn't in the bar for this i'm sorry carry on. <laughs> oh yeah this was wonderful and so sure enough krista rolled and the bartender went and tried to pull because they can't adjust the coins because they were basically a bunch of falling coins that i had replaced the the liquid with and i had drunk the beer that had that had uh i had unfrozen out of time because i basically had tossed up a handful of coins um and then uh so sure enough uh Cephist, uh planted a coin on there and then sure enough acted like he was looking around spent like he's like i'm gonna spend like 10 minutes looking around at the entire entirety of it like i'm very scrutinizing which one and like and like only gonna be able to and the rule was like you could only touch one and if you couldn't get it off that was it and so Sure enough, then he reached up to it and then just plucked off the one, and the bartender's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so good. But honestly, I don't I don't know if I really have, like, in my head, fav- I don't, I mean, obviously I do, but, like, not, not really, right? Because, like, I don't, I have such a good time, like, in either your games that you're DMing or with you as my teammate, because, like, we do mesh very well as far as, like, most anything, as far as, like, tax and everything else goes, like, just, just most anything. So like I don't, I don't know if I really have any like favorite moments as far as like any ones I can pick out. You getting hit in the face actually with with a book, whenever you open a door instead of me, and it was the only door so I didn't open. Funny. That was pretty good. <laughs> that might be up there for me actually. That was good. I remember when you sent me a DM about in that same campaign in that same dungeon how you you noticed that I was I was picking the corner so I could cover the most distance on us and like just staying there. And everyone's like, are you moving forward? I'm like, no, I'm good. I can still see you guys and yeah. just hanging back. 
And then as soon as we went into a room, I'd storm in and, and again pick the best corner and just sit there and cover. And you realize that I was just like, oh, other people can look around. I am perfectly good doing this. Right. Yeah, I was. that was the only reason I was being so ballsy in that campaign. I was like, I know for a fact, if someone surrounds me, they're getting fucking shot. That's going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to kick these doors with impunity. But yeah. And then a door got, for, for the chance, so that they understand, a single door got forgotten because they were, it was many doors on the left and right of a hallway, and it was a very long hallway. And Chris was going left, right, left, right, left, right, but then, you know, conversation happened, and then the the pattern, he's like, okay, the left one must be next. And it's like, well, no, we actually had to skip the right, so he kept going. And I was, me being me, I tend to be a bit more quiet, and then I just, so, if I'm not, like, directly in control of something, so I was like, whatever. And, and I was the rear guard, so I was like, I'm just gonna open this. It's probably, like, they all had been empty bedrooms. Empty bedroom, empty bedroom, empty bedroom, empty bedroom, empty bedroom, empty bedroom, and then empty bedroom, and then library filled with demons. And so it was like, <laughs> and the, the first, like, two of them, like, managed to hit me with books and brought me down to, like, 5 HP, and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> They're killing me with the Encyclopedia Britannica, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah one yeah. of the funniest. And I literally just ran, ran into one of the empty bedrooms. I opened the door of another bedroom, went into a different one and closed the door and proceeded to start he drinking healing potions. I was like, fuck that shit. Because <laughs> then I figured they'd think I went in the open door one, you know? Yeah, Mislead. Right. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I, honestly, I, <laughs> yeah, that was really good. I don't know if I have any. That or maybe like the litmus test I did for that party where like, Basically, we fought like these these demons that were worms, and they came bursting out of the out of the bodies of these two people at a graveyard. Two super sketch, yeah, yeah, right. Super sketchy worms. And then after we after we killed them, I wanted to get a like in my head. This the, now hear me out, hear me out, chat before before you start before you start asking me questions. All right, hear me out. I have questions. The idea in my head, <laughs> the idea in my head was, I wonder how chaotic this group is and how much I can get away with without being an evil character. And so. I wanted to see. And so basically I was like, all right, these worms are dead. There's just these husks of skin, right? And then the DM was like, yeah, for sure. I was like, okay, I'd like to do a craft check to turn the skin into backpacks. And then <laughs> everybody was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just turn a corpse into a backpack? And I was like, well, actually, I mean, I could. Like, <laughs> like Remember, uh, Sylvan Orion would not let you live that down. It was no. just like the... <laughs> that man was very much just say, how dare you? I will remember this until your your forebears, forebears. This is an <laughs> insult against the gods. <laughs> it was a good litmus test. I knew exactly what the boundaries were directly after that, like right away. I, that. I had to do no pushing of envelopes. <laughs> I knew exactly how far I could go. Why can't you just turn a corpse into a backpack? What else are they good for? Uh, mulch. Anyways. The meat. <laughs> the meat. Jerky. <Yeah>. hungry. <laughs> uh, I mean, Deckel notes from our first D&D game. Uh, like, because Deckel... This man sent a Draco Lich at our... Granted, caravan with NPCs who could also assist with it. But, like, we, we were like... I mean, I was higher level because I didn't have templates and the rest of the party did. But literally, I mean, I was not that much higher level. I was like level five, and a Draco Lich attacked our caravan, and it's like, dear God in heaven. But after it died, I went over and like I was like, all right, so I'm taking like like it's like five bones. I'm taking its fangs. I'm taking its claws. I'm like I literally started grinding up the smaller bones to make an ash paint as I carved in etchings for my for my thigh bone staff, and then painted like basically an ash like dark paint to make it even darker black on the interior of it. So I was playing a necromancer. A mm -hmm. necromancer in awesome. secret, but she was basically hiding it. She was basically, it was because elves don't make liches in the D and D world. They make Belnorns, uh, which are basically instead of being bound to a phylactery, they're bound to a concept. And so oh. she was based, and she was actually supposed to be a good person, being led by evil people. And the, there was a whole story about that. But uh, she basically wanted to become a Belnorn and then make a academy uh, dev devoted to plumbing the depths of evil so she could define it. Like, she would do all the evil things so she could put it in a book and be like, here's what it does. Read this. As terrible as it is, this will teach you, like, this is 100% accurate. The problem is, like, you know, yeah, after the, the process and she was basically corrupted and found too much, I don't want to say joy, but she was too driven to continue right. it. And so yeah, she basically was... What was that, Tickle? Oh, I oh, said hydrate. thanks for the hydrate, yeah. 
So basically, like, and then also to do it, like, Deckel had decided that, yeah, she will still have to do a great evil like a lich does in order to finish it because she's, like, she's devoting to that evil craft. And so it's like, that makes sense. And so uh, she also ostracized herself to the party. And then worth, in my opinion, the worst part was she started releasing these books all across the countries. And it basically, every single one had a preface of thank you to, and then listed off the party for making this all possible as she listed off, like, how to flay people. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Thank, thank you to my good friends for, you know, taking me on this adventure and not killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing. Like, she she was wholly, like, just like, she seemed like an evoker. I played her like she was supposed to seem like an evoker, and she was. Because she also, she was a necromancer mixed with uh, a, uh, a specialty in uh, acid magic. Because, like, that's where she had stored, like, some of her key stuff, like, was in basically a pool of, like, literally unbeatable acid, and then like magic to surround it so you couldn't get oh it was great yeah i realize i'm rambling but no, no, you're good you're good you're good that uh, does sound really cool though my first actual DD game that i ran uh actually was deco had handed over the reins and then i ran a game where they uh because they and they had the choice of it what they wanted to run they're like this they're like well we think we'd want to stop her i'm like all right we'll do a campaign where you go and you de you defeat her instead and then it actually became a campaign where the majority of the party wanted to save her instead and basically oh, wow. convince her to turn away from it. So she actually became a recurring NPC. She's actually still alive in my Pathfinder games because my Pathfinder games canon runs under a dimension hopping because that's what my original D&D DMs, there were three DMs who rotated between the three of them and that's what they always ran. And so, I and they always that. ran, because then, well, I loved it because one of them basically started the concept and the other two picked it up where it was basically, they wanted to make sure that everybody entered the canon. Your characters would always enter the canon if the campaign was a success. They would take over your character and but play it in the spirit that you did. They would try to mimic the way you spoke so that your character had had uh, immortality in that way. And right. so I was like, so, and then a lot of us who left the game and like didn't just play with them, we like, we'll still post up in Gmail and we'll talk and we'll be like, yeah, this is what's happening in this variant of it. And then we'll sometimes take from each other's because it's like, why not? It's like, so then it's like, cause it's supposed to be like, and it was literally because it's because we went from Great uh, Grey Wolf to uh, we went to Eberron, then we went to Forgotten Realms, and my character was an Eberron Drow, who bas who basically got uh, not by a direct wishcraft. She got it because she wanted to gain power to save people in the moment, and she wished for the po the power in order to be strong enough to save the rest of the party. Because the rest of the party was TPWing when I was away, because uh. I had gone I had gone in the wrong way, and basically got split up and. Basically, it was one of the things like, yeah, you're not going to be like, literally, they got shunted to another dimension. So I was like, that's fair. And so I love that I, because like, it feels like the overarching theme is like, hey, here's my version of this is basically just like, hey, here's this other dimension. Check mm -hmm. it out. Like, oh, that's super cool. Yeah, so they basically let me pick like, you know, what kind of power set up like, like, like that would fit. And it ended up being an elemental master of a dragon who actually became a recurring character in my own ones. But then they also have run with her, too, because one of them actually has meant to be that to this day, he's still running with her as a recurring character and what I ended up making with her. I love that so much. But. Yeah, oh it's so God. much fun. And so it's like literally almost actually just over two and a half decades of of lore that I know just like collab and so I try to put my own players into that now I'm sorry you said two and a half decades this has been going on for two and that really <laughs> like, yes. like the same like the same unit like the same canon the same universe yeah do you guys have it like written down uh we have an email chain you've got to do you've got to do something with that you gotta like I don't know. I do. Like, do something it's with part of my play. Her campaign. It's, if you, the fact that you're in one of my canon Pathfinder games means that you're part of it. You're part of the online canon of my Pathfinder universe, which includes that, which has dealt with it. Like when I alluded to a thing called a weekly. Actually, um, oh no, that's not that's not streamed. But um, if you hear me mention the weekless campaign, or like they're actually uh, site sixty seven got the weekless because I literally. Uh, Nikki uh, helped me port them over so that, like, Site 67 sees the weakless true to form. It's like, yeah, we're using other people's avatars to make to pass them off, but it's like the concept is 100% the same. Um, there is, like, one of my best games I called my hub game, which was also known as the monster game, where the players get to play as uh, monsters and, uh, like, from the, the, the monster manuals. And uh, it was solely focused around 
reuniting that character because she had split her soul into a bunch of different shards, which is a concept that actually came from Deckel's game. Uh, the idea of splitting someone's souls into prerequisite parts in order to strengthen, like, it was basically Kitsune, like Nine-Tailed Kitsune, who, when role-playing and working with Deckel, one of my characters uh, decided to split her into, actually, the same Bell Norn, um, who's known as Night Angel. Um, she split a Nine-Tailed Kitsune into One-Tailed Kitsune with all the different facets of her personality, then help them gain experience and clout and magic to become nine tailed in their own and then she undid the magic so they became a like you know basically a, a, a goddess of reality but that was because they all were bound to her was then very much entranced with her so it's like all this is part of the canon and so right. it's like but, but, but like what i'm saying is, is like with the amount of like with the amount of stuff there is i mean like i don't know like make like a like 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 a book or something, you know what I mean? Like like a series or something. Like I know that it's have happening. Quite a few shop, actually. But... I have I'm nothing published, but I have I have um, a couple things. I have everything for the monster game written down into a a couple uh, document files. I have uh, two PDFs that I've devoted to my Kingmaker game. One of which goes over the entirety of all the maps that Paizo made for Kingmaker. And every single hex has at least three other things. Normally, they would hide uh, about twenty-five things in each in each map for each book, and then uh, you would find them over the course of the game. Some would be very obviously found. Some would be even landmarks, so they're sticking out of the ground, and some would be hidden. I put at least three more in every single hex, so that it's much more in depth. I put ancient history down below. So if you went under, like, and went like, if they spent the time to spend it arch archaeology style. They could find like what happened in this area and like literally like if they sense like you know someone to study it or use magic and i have that for the entirety of the map it's 256 pages long and it's literally and it literally i put overarching stories in there so like the ground itself tells a story of three different wars that were cast over this land and then i also have an entire campaign written that is six chapters just like a pathfinder one and it is waiting, and the only thing it's missing, it doesn't have art, and I need to balance treasure. But otherwise, every single encounter is written, the entire plot is written. Um, it's It came, I finished it before uh, Wrath of the Righteous, actually, mm -hmm. but it has some notes that's, that play very similar, but it deals very heavily with Absalom. But, um, and then finally, I have a custom world. If you know the website MindMup, uh, which lets you make a mind mup. I'm not familiar now, but that's pretty cool. You know when you make a, a thought, like a thought diagram where you like basically have this feeds into this, and you connect it with lines and arrows and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It does that. You can you can do those. You can make them for free. I literally maintain. It's only like ten bucks a year, but I maintain a yearly subscription to them because I have three on there that are bigger than if I were to print them at size eight font, not even like full font. They would take up a bigger space in my bedroom wall and there's three of them because i am building or i have built really it's mostly done a custom world i have two playing decks that i have that are built just for that the first time i run it i'm if it's online i'm going to deal it out to people on webcam otherwise it basically deals with like a character concept building thing that i'm going to give someone to so like your character may know a secret of the world or you make it something that just says like you know you you have it like it makes an npc and basically shuffles it out so that you literally have a hand of fate um, and so it's literally something I'm trying to build to to get my Pathfinder game so that you guys will eventually be playing in an utterly custom world that has canon that still connects not just to Pathfinder but to Forgotten Realms, to Eberron, and to Grey Wolf. All the way back. All the way back. That is so, deep. That is a deep ass well right there. Yeah, you were talking about uh, Cursive's world building, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is why, and I've said it before to a shitload of people, like, Cursive is, like, bar none, best DM and the best storyteller that I've met. Like, bar none. Bar none at all. Like, that is a lot of depth. Like, that is a fuckload of depth. I mean, and I love it. Love every part of that. It would be awesome to publish if, uh... Yeah, cough, cough, wink, wink. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I need I some really fantasy should. artists was... to help out and do the art for it. You know? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to get the campaign one done, just because that one would be the easiest to do. Because it's easily put. Because like, I mean, all of it would be amazing. And honestly, with with my vocational woes, um, that's like that's 
probably the one that I should really consider. I, I mean, the king. Hmm? Go, ahead. Go ahead. The kingmaker one would be easy because the kingmaker one, it's like, well, I just have all the hexes numbered and literally has no direct references to anything that Pinezo made, so it'd be easy to make as a third-party supplement, like as, like what the legendary games do for all their ones, like like what I use for Mummy's Mask. I mean, Festered right. Sun is a legendary game supplement. Um, well, if you so ever it's... if you ever want someone who like knows how to build like or not build if you if you ever want good artists that know like landscaping art or like you know like world art stuff like that, I actually know a couple people. If if you ever are curious, but like just let me know like if you ever want to reach out to them. I was ever in a state of better wiggle room, or if like if my channel got to the point that I could live off it and like had enough that I could start setting away I would certainly like because I'm big on like budgeting you start setting stuff aside for each thing I right. would literally like make like a jar for each of those and just be like okay this is going to be this step and just get it growing it's just right now I'm just trying to get to the point that I can do Not that totally the same mm. but I, I do think that would pay that would be very fulfilling and then I could also put once it got fully rolling I could literally devote my time to it and I would love doing that because I knew but anyways, I have jabbered for like no, you're you're great. fine. No, you're good. I asked you about this, like you don't understand. The whole point of this is basically me in the kindest way gaslighting you and then letting you roll. Like that's the whole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and I'm susceptible to that. If you give me about something, I'm, I'm if if I am no, it's uh, fantastic. That's the whole point. That's what I'm poking you about. No, and... I definitely would like to help any way I can to get this rolling because it's. I've... I've already written this down in a particular in a particular folder that I have about particular personal projects. So, <laughs> already been written down. There's a pin put in that. Expect to hear about it. Polite gaslighting is my band name, Koala. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would love to, like, not as much as I don't want to... Oh, I just cut you off, Tackle. You go first. I was just saying... If... Time has been such an issue, but I really want to get things rolling to the point we can make this a more, you know, uh, financially sound adventure. <laughs> I mean, if I can get to a point where I'm not worrying about, like, making enough for rent and my basic living things, my current one is basically get to a point where I can stream in the early day, unless yeah. it's like an evening streamed game or, like, you know, Site67 streamed. Um, and then basically just make that regular because then i could always be here for anyone else who is because i know that i mean hell a lot of our friend group and, and stream group alike are some of them work and like but there's like always a day where someone's on and someone's not and so it's like it's like i'd happily help out anyone who wants to or just hang out yeah. because i love just like i've had a couple where i just was commentary on their game but in their chat so it's like why not um but i because like i would happily devote the same time that i do for work for that but i just have to get to the point that i can do that mm -hmm. but I mean, I as far even... as oh, I was just gonna say, as far as the Pathfinder stuff is concerned, I cannot stress enough how much fun it has when like there's a level of like predictability that I mean, Paizo makes very good worlds, and I and I obviously very much enjoy them, but um, there is very much a level that when I start adding things to it, when I first started doing it. Uh, there were certain players that I had that actually hated it, that despised it, and would like stay on the, the written path, and it's like, and I half believe that, but then once I got past that one and just fully got into my own and was like confident with it, where I was like, no, I know what I can add is fun. Yeah, sometimes it, I can be a little repetitive on certain themes, but it's like watching the players light up when they realize they found something utterly hidden, but that has that isn't random, that isn't off a table of random things. Yeah. That that is like this was meant for you to find it here and it actually and then like especially once they realize piece a connects to piece b and causes something to happen like it's literally like watching somebody do an escape room and finding the answer and that that elation and it's like oh my god it's so satisfying yeah i kind of wanted to like ask you about this a little bit as far as like under the hood stuff goes like i'm sure it happens from time to time right but like how much have you had to improv like how much has it been like Okay, a prime example. One of my favorite D and D campaigns that started from a module, right? That started from like a one shot. Okay, and mm -hmm. it, it, and check this out. The, it, it started really the campaign started at the beginning of the module and then immediately was derailed. And what happened was is it was this DM's first time DMing, right? And the uh, the PCs it was like their first or second campaign. This is back in like three point five, I believe. Mm -hmm. And basically, the beginning of the module it starts off with a wedding where a, I think it's a princess is getting married 
to some guy that she doesn't love, right? I think the whole party unanimously was like, fuck that. We're not going to sit here and watch you get married to someone you don't like. So they knocked him out, knocked her out, and then kidnapped her and started running. Oh, right? shit. It, it was a part of narrative. It was not even a part they were supposed to interact with. This was supposed to be like a part of the setup. And like they fully kidnapped her and took off. And then the DM basically had to start improv like what in the hell was going on because this is so far derailed. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. They improv it and basically made it to where like it ended up being becoming a homebrew campaign where basically it was um, essentially like uh, what was from looking for it where they were basically the princess is like almost like Stockholm syndrome and is like, thank you so much for rescuing me from this wedding. And then like, they're also being chased by like the law and all the authorities like in the area because they fully kidnapped a, a member of royalty. Right. And like, it's just really cool. But like, how much have you had to improv on like a regular basis within your campaigns, Cursive? I would say it's a skill that is fairly important to any of them that you're not. The biggest step is always you have to talk to your table and understand what they want. And you need to, and that's the big, the kicker there is understand what they want. And a lot of people get stuck on to the, it's my game as the DM or it's the player's game as the table and the DM. And it's just one of the, I often have said it to Declan where it's like, it's about the table's fun. And that includes the DM. And so like in but my games, writing a story together. Like that's right. Yeah. But the big thing of it comes down to with like, I had a guy who was actually kind of toxic looking back, but well, kind of really toxic actually. But, um, he was very much the thing of it should always be in the player's choice. And so when I ran for him, I was running uh, VTM, Vampire of the Masquerade, the old World of Darkness one, which is a great role-playing system, by the way. If we ever get the chance to play, I think you would enjoy the hell out of it, Grix. Um, but the uh, the big part of it was he thought that it should always be in the players. And like literally when I sent them obvious clues that this is the plot here, um, they would run the other way and then expecting to keep making it. And, I, and they did that a few times. Anytime the story got involved, he actively would have them evac because he's like it's the logical thing to do even though the story was like literally about averting an apocalypse and so it's like it doesn't really make what sense it's he like, was he was having the pcs like literally run away from narrative yes. yeah so like in in vtm you basically have what? a couple of factions you have basically the vampires that are trying to blend with re with uh civilization called the camarilla you have the sabbat who are the ones who are trying to be like dracula i am the you know i am your i am uh, the predator to your prey um but and basically it was i was using the setite if you've you've seen me i absolutely love egyptian anything and so mm -hmm. uh and this was one of my first games i ran for them because i had actually run digital games on the on a video game version that let you dm um and so this was my first try with the live group because one of my players on the digital one convinced me to do it point being is um it was basically that the they had found out the setites had brought back isis and she had, she was the key, her being alive, left the door open so that the door between the living world and the underworld was open, which to them was basically vampires could walk out of the door if they knew where it was from the afterlife to the to the living life. So the setites could keep coming back. So instead mm -hmm. they just left and because I had based it in Minneapolis. And so he, they decided, well, these are too dangerous and they know where we are. We'll just leave. And they left to Chicago and I made a whole new story for them. And then as soon as that one got really heated because I made that one about hunters and how there was a hunter who liked working with vampires. They tried to kill her just because they didn't like the fact that she seemed like like, you know, a little DMPC-ish, but it's like I literally made her to be like a vampire hunter that didn't want to hunt. I based her off a of fucking Buffy. And so it's like <laughs> and so it's like they literally shot her in the back. She survived and managed to like actually like kill the guy who did it. And then like they ran away from that because they were afraid that she was going to join with the other hunters, logically so. They just shot her in the back with a shotgun. Um and, awesome. it does and then make they me want to DM a lot because I do like to flex like some improv. I, I want to get better <laughs> at it. So, oh yeah. And then so it's like I I literally like had to run with all the shit on the fly and like, but that actually really helped me get better at improv because doing that he did the same thing for every game system we ended up playing, and it turned out that yeah he just the guy had other problems. But um, hey random guy out there, listen here. Hey listen listen here, sir. Never run away from the narrative. Never. Don't, over, don't don't ruin your table's <laughs> fun, you son of a man. 
Well, the, that was the thing too. Is like, yeah, the rest of the table ended up saying that they really hated it, and so yeah, it's there's, like there's no they, they liked the campaign, but they hated that he was demanding that they left. Yeah, there's, so it's there's like, no way that's enjoyable. You're in a you're in a literal role playing game, and you're running, you're physically leaving narrative. Like, there's no way you enjoy it. every encounter. No way, no way you. Yeah, that's never happened in any of our games, right? Right. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so there's there's a fair bit of uh, improv in almost all the games, and like literally. Uh, there was a game that someone in that group designed called Nexus uh, that is his uh, baby that I absolutely love. It's a mixture of sliders meets the multiverse, um, where it's basically everyone in the campaign can make whatever you want. It can be canon or it can be utterly uncanon. It could be straight out of your head. Our first game I was playing, oh, sorry, hiccups, a Left 4 Dead 2 witch uh, that was as if Left 4 Dead happened in the 50s instead of the 2000s. Uh, and then we had a Warhammer, normal Warhammer dwarf, a Warhammer 40k, uh, what's the word, uh, Necro or, I think Necron. Necril. Um, Necron. I think that's right, yeah. Uh, and then we had a D&D rogue. Um, and so it was just this crazy, like, mishmash and like, and then like. <laughs> Imagine being the rogue, like everybody else is like. I am the destroyer of every third moon. This is wild. Like, oh, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the, I'm the pinnacle of this crazy ass epidemic that's wiped out humanity. And you're like, I'm just, I can find I just traps. Like steel, I just like the steel stuff, dude. I <laughs> the don't rogue like... actually ended up being the the uh, most dangerous one because they kept stealing shit and being anti party. They were very <laughs> kind of rogue. <laughs> that same player did that in my VTM game too. They're, oh my god, this is a rather um. Uh, I keep I keep hitting the tangent upon tangent, but um, so BTM I was basing off of over once, and I basically came up with the idea of I called them hellhounds, and it was basically dogs given vampire blood because in the BTM system, if you give other humans your blood, they become your servants and they become ghouls. If they're if they're dead when they do it, they become vampires. Um, and so I treated it that if they do it to uh, dogs they can get hellhounds if they're alive and if they're dead they uh turn into greater hellhounds which basically are like they can't be controlled they're just wild um point being is he was playing malkavian the insane ones um and there's all there's a common trope called fish mouth where they do random dumb shit this guy didn't get the gun he wanted from the first newbie vendor i sent for them and so he decided to not shoot the vendor but a random member in the party because he they didn't have a p90 um so he shot a party member? What, he shot what? a party member, which was turned out to be the, the toxic player, who was a fire mage. Who um, Vampires in that system are very weak to fire, so he ended up got, getting crippled in a way he couldn't heal for like like two in-game weeks. So it was like, and the sessions are very long. What, and... what does that have to... Hold on a second. <laughs> Pump the fucking brakes. Alright, so you go to a come and go, or like a quick trip, or like any kind of gas station or convenience store, right? You walk in there and you're like, oh man, these guys don't have the particular kind of chips I like anyways. And then you pull out a handgun and put one in your buddy's leg. Like, what That's... the fuck is your problem? See, every vampire in VTM has a flaw. And the uh, you're supposed to pick up madness of some sort and define it. To put it in perspective, before this, I, ha I actually have a flagship Malkavian uh, that I love named Garrett. And his whole thing was he sees the entire world in chess. He can only speak in chess analogies. However, it became a very cool concept that a lot of people like because he would uh, basically call everybody a gray piece. And he would define you by how much power he felt you had, be it socially or powerfully. So, like, you know, like, you'd be like, okay, you, you're a gray bishop. You're a gray queen. He would call everybody gray or beige or, or like, you know, something like that. Because, because he didn't know whose side you were on. If he utterly trusted you, he would give you a color. And that color always matched what he was wearing. So he was basically saying, like, if you were an ally. If it was an opposite color, then he, that, that was him referring to you as an enemy. That was his madness. That's how I role-played it, because it was a lot of fun. And so oh, this dude, guy decided that he just would do random... Awesome. Yeah, this guy just did random dumb shit. Um, and one of the ones was they were fighting the Hellhounds, which could, basically could track anyone that they got a scent of the blood of, regardless of situation. They always could find you. If you flew over the ocean, they could still find your relative direction. And so it's like... That was the big thing of them. He had told the party, because he had made a role to understand what these were after finding a dead one. And so I handed him a slip of paper with, with the write-up of what he knew. He added facts to it, one of which was that they were afraid of water. And they literally made a giant plan to ambush one of these things later on when they were in the third city and these things had caught up to them. 
Um, cause like these things were basically Anubian, like Anubian jackals that had basically like were from the Setites that were like chasing them down from the original story. And cause like, and it wasn't me trying to get them back on the railroad. It was just simply like, well, they want you dead. You know the secret. Of course they're going to be chasing you. Right. And so they made a, a trap on an island in a lake thinking that, ha, they'll ne they won't, the hellhounds won't be able to cross the water because he had told them they were afraid of water. And it's like, no, I literally had the Hellhounds come out of the water as well as a pool that was in the middle because we'd always use like Google images to like figure out what was there. And so like, like what? You literally going against your own lore. You're countering these. And the guy started cackling, laughing at the table. And he's like, yes, for literally two real life months he had, or I mean, it was more than two, honestly, but like he had kept up the charade and it led to them wiping. And it was like, and he was laughing his head off, and the so rest he of he made it up. He made up. He made it out of the app. He had he had uh, basically added it and wow. put it in. Wow. Because he was reading off my little paper and just added three different facts. The absolute deception. <laughs> I kind of love that. It's toxic as fuck, but I kind of love the commitment. Like that's a dick move, and I don't support that. Anyone listening, and if you're curious about getting into like tabletop, don't fucking do that. That's really annoying. However. Wow. That is... Advice to anyone in this chat, if you want to do that stuff, say it out of character. Make it a moment for the other players to play around it. Yes, you will have some people who will metagame the hell out of that. Or like if they, because like I started that with some of my group where I will start saying those kind of conversations out loud to everyone. But then just tell people just don't metagame. But then some people very clearly metagame. But it's like, but at the same time, that keeps your table functional longer. Because it basically, when you do it on the sly, it's like it turns into big big fights because right. it's like and then they blame you yes a That's lot of people like... look to the dm to be the babysitter when really you're all fucking adults yeah it's once again about the whole like we like the whole point of the tabletop like tabletop rpgs is like you're making the story together like as a table so like no like the the, the dm is not your babysitter like they're they're your peer like they're just simply conveying what you're seeing around you and then you're playing within it like that that's all the, like ah. it's it, really it, not even on like that level of dickness but it's really annoying when one or two people don't want to engage with like telling what they want they you know basically talking about anything that game wise until they just bullshit out of their hat <laughs> right yeah did, did I ever tell you both about um, a buddy of mine who was playing like they, like they did a campaign uh, where they weren't discussing alignments at all like in any facet mm -hmm. and then throughout the course of the campaign uh, at some point they had fought a I want to say a lich like like, like some, some kind of like a necromancer or like a lich or something like that and um, basically he had I don't I don't recall the exact details I think I was like 15 whenever this game happened but basically. Uh, like somehow convinced the party to like let him air quotes solo this this like you know like this mini boss that was like a necromancer or whatever and they had somehow managed to like trap this dude in like a bag of holding like this big ass bag of holding mm -hmm. and then like for the rest of the campaign after each encounter they would just quietly go and collect all the dead bodies from like all the encounters and so like this kept happening and you come to find at the very end this character was fully evil, right? Like, I mean, I don't recall if they're lawful or chaotic. I think it was lawful. But they, they were definitely an evil character. And at the very end, they had to climb down this big-ass pit. And they get down to this pit, and that character didn't climb down with them. And they were like, so the rest of the party is down in this pit. And then, you know, this evil character made the reveal about their alignment and then just upturned this bag of holding that then, like, essentially just threw up a bunch of, like, you know, recently, like, you know, revived, like, you know, a bunch of zombies and shit. Oh, shit. And just fully wiped That's out the terrifying. party. That's terrifying. Yeah, just fully wiped out the party. But, but yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say those kind of moments aren't amazing for the table, too. So it's like, and if you're, if you know your group is good with that kind of play. Right. The problem is, a lot of times they're not. Like, Strict I would say different. the majority of times they're not. Right, strict difference. That group, that was a one-shot campaign. It was not intended to be long-term, right? And then on top of that, like the whole point of them hiding alignments is the DM. I do remember this. Like the DM's purpose of it was like more like I, I don't want to say PvP because that's not accurate, right? But he wanted to run a semi-adversarial campaign, right? We're like, yeah. yeah, the party is achieving the party's goals. However, if some shit popped off, that's fine. Like you guys can feel free to meet each other halfway. 
And oh, yeah, so yeah. like everybody was under the pretense of like, yeah, if we killed each other, that's fucking fine. So that's why it's okay. But <laughs> you're describing with that player, that's a dickhead. <laughs> like Right, like how like Wizards did a great job with the Horde of the Dragon Queen because they designed that under there's a there's like five or six organizations that run like you know basically we don't want the world to end like and one of them's basically like you know the druids one's like the good guys like the ones like the the guys who just want to make money and so it's like whatever and so it's basically just and there was one thing mentioned in it because after nikki had uh uh or uh, had run it um uh, i went and looked in and was like okay because i was i had uh actually silver wolf had uh, mentioned that uh she might want want to play it and so i had considered running it and so I read through it uh, because we were done with it. And I saw that it's like the, one of the things that I had mentioned is like, yeah, maybe you have a uh, each party member be from a different faction because their goals are different based on what's happening, but they're all united in wanting to stop the end of the world. Right. And so it's like that, cool. that makes more sense. Cause it's like, this guy's out for money. This guy's out for, it's like, yeah, it's like you can even make it secret or not, or have all of them, but one be part of a group and they don't know which one's not that they, they just know one of them isn't. Cause I know that's one that a lot of people think where like, you know, you, you, you have a uh, you deal out cards and tell like the players whoever got the ace is the betrayer of the party and like whatever's going on you're going to be the like you know that kind of thing at the start that's that's a cool concept too and then a lot of people will also do ones where they'll do that and then not have the ace in the pile or have it be all aces and so it's like because it's like that obviously adds interesting elements but it's like as long as your table knows that's the thing because i think some people will be in a group where they see that happen and it's cool but then they get determined to do that at their next group where no one is, they think no one's going to see it coming, but then they come off looking like an asshole when they're not an asshole. Yeah. Now the question is this Malkavian player was very much the asshole. Cause he did that in every group that I ever saw him with ever after that. He's a nice guy, but it seems like his fun is to ruin the fun of others. Yeah, very much so. Cause like he literally like in the Nexus game, you had a, a device that let you, basically sliders into the next world and he literally took that and ran away and left us to die in a world that was very hostile and so it's like gonna, no if you're gonna play like that like go go play a video game honestly like just, yeah. just go play a video game you're, you're not playing with like npcs yeah and like, i said it's important to anyone who wants to even do like the edgelord character kind of thing where it's like if you want to do the shenanigan stuff either make sure you're in a group that wants to be with that or or doing a one-on-one -on -one, or just go play a video game yeah, these are the honestly, kind of people that like mod in red dead servers right well, <laughs> that's super fair uh, there, there, there is more to life than no challenge i promise um, <laughs> oh man hold on there's other shit i want to talk to y'all about oh fuck yeah it's it i <laughs> sorry I, i've been enraptured so i've been i've been quiet over here no you're good what the fuck what was it uh I did have one thing that while you're looking at your thing that I thought would be fun that we could potentially oh. organize. What's up? Um, especially since I know koalas in there. I thought it could be fun to organize effectively one shots. They'd probably be multiple given that how slow gameplay can be. Hmm. But if we organize some way to make characters quickly, it'd be fun to maybe do one shots and bring in people from the channel sometimes. Just be like, all right, we're going to have like, you know, Deckle and. Deckle and uh, cursive play. Koala's gonna run, and like you know, like and uh, like uh, Goblin can do like like you know could run or like you know like, you know just basically like make it a thing. Or then we bring in people from the chat, and then okay. like just so, like, like literally a one night streamed session, like like a literal one shot. Right. Yeah. Like I even thought of doing like Emerald Super Dungeon and making it a meat grinder and making it like all right when you're out, like you go back to chat and we bring up another person, but. <laughs> I think that would actually first off that's a fantastic idea secondly i think it'd be pretty pretty straightforward to do i think it'd have to be in like a i don't know i don't know to put this kindly i think it'd probably have to be in like fifth ed like for simplicity's sake yeah and then like probably like point by or something else standard where it's not a whole lot of time detracted from character building yeah and if we use an official one like if because if we use something with an official character builder i mean we right. could have people do it in there because then they also tell you if it's up to code or not because you could just look at it like rather than have a dm like normally look at okay this is all fine um you could actually literally just have it be like okay this one says it has it's following all the rules so we're good right. don't even care what's on it like dnd beyond or something that'd be pretty yeah. easy. pathfinder has it has or path builder has that too which is like either one would work um but that's, that's really your... a good idea i like that a lot you could just have people you know either 
make a character ahead of time, or you could have a couple pre built that people can just hop into. Well, because I figure what you could do is you could, like if we did like for example the super dungeon one that I've been wanting to do where it's like you could literally just tell people all right guys we all hit level two so everyone level up your characters let's go and yeah, then just right. and then literally every session rotate out people like the course said yeah our people would be here but then if we didn't have somebody or someone had to go it's like all right we have an open spot that would be actually really fun yeah for sure <laughs> oh that'd be a really good idea at some point, just full disclosure, at some point if we actually end up doing this, one of those one shots, especially if it's fifth ed, will be Krimbus. Like just just Krimbus. Like Well yeah, you could totally bring in a character that you play in another campaign. Why not? Make it like just like some sort of dimensional oddity or something that they're there. Like they fell asleep and they're there. If they die, they're not actually dead. Right. But it's gonna be it's gonna be if I end up running one, like as a DM, guess what the big bad's gonna be, boys and girls? It's gonna be Krimbus, he's gonna be a lich, his phylactery, the crab. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because then also all of our people could bring in like their flagship favorite character from their long lost game or the one that they haven't gotten to play for for ten years. And I'm like, I would love to meet all those. Right. As I do have as long quite as you a be few... role playing. <laughs> right. I do actually have quite a few like pretty pretty hardcore uh, uh, tabletop reg regulars like in my in my streams. So that would be really fun. It'd be for real fun. We need to get up our pool of regulars so we can have people to pull from. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I also want to play other games with people, like like get a like a channel wide, like a full per like. I think that uh, Wheel of Fate can have forty or the what was it the the Wheel of Impossible Questions on Jackbox and have forty people. And it's like I want forty people on that bitch. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> I actually had a actually, I don't want to say similar because it really wasn't. I had an idea for a uh, a tabletop thing involving stream where it was basically like it was almost like peer reviewed characters. And so what it was is like you develop a campaign, whatever campaign, right? And then you would pose to like on social or like to your chats or whatever, right? Like, hey, based on what you know about me and the crew, right, that are playing like this game. So like, let's say the party was like, you know, us three and then Koala, right? Then be like, hey, based on what you know about us four, make us character sheets that you believe are, you know, like one of me, one of Cursive, one of Deck, one of Koala, as they're like as those people, right? <laughs> and then take those character sheets figure out which ones like that person or like figure out which one that, that like we like the best of each person and then have like everyone else check everyone else's so like have like you know like <laughs> have like koala check you know cursives have deckel check mine have me check you, you know what i'm saying and then like run those because i think it'd be really fun because i feel like it'd end up being like a it'd basically be a campaign of like caricatures like it wouldn't be totally accurate you know what i mean because right. it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, be it wouldn't be possible for a, well, uh, that's so a version of yourself, like an idealized version. Goblin, why does my character have zero intelligence? Because you keep talking <laughs> bad about yourself, and I'm about to throw this. I've been rolling a nail, like as in like 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 a carpentry nail in my in my fingers this whole time. I'm gonna throw it at you. About five <laughs> seconds. Do you ever? Do you ever say anything bad about my friend Koala? All right, don't do it. But yeah. I think that'd be really fun. I like that idea about one shots. That's that's a very good idea. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So actually, I know a little thing, right? I'm not once again not trying to not trying to get too personal. However, um, so cursive. You and I have talked about this a couple times. Your sister uh, got in a paintball quite a little bit whenever she was, you know, coming up, right? So I wanted to ask, did you ever, did you also like ever get into like paintball and airsoft and stuff or no? I did, uh, not airsoft. Uh, without going into too much, airsoft had a bit of a annoying aspect to it that uh, I didn't get. I mean, I only set the deck all afterwards that I, I think I could get into it now, but at the time, but paintball I did. Um, my parents actually got me a Tipman 98 that I ended up buying the uh, long, the longbow kit for, which was a lot of fun. And then I also had a Stinger, which I actually had done to uh, go full auto, which was basically like cheating in any public field, but a lot of them ended up banning it later. <laughs> but uh, the Tipman 98 was wonderful. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely loved Paintball. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, same. I was really into it when I was younger. For those who don't know the, uh, the Longbow, it's a sniper configuration that is semi-automatic and very, very quiet. Um, very, very long distance, too. It, I mean, it still has an arc, a very obvious arc, but you can, it literally had a slide uh, sight that you could put on it that would let you track it. 
And once you learned it, you didn't even need the sight. You could just rip it off and just play with it. I mean, it wasn't quite enough that, I mean, like an actual silence gun, it was not that quiet, but in the midst of a, of a like a wood ball game, easily silent enough. I mean, right. an actual silence gun isn't that quiet. <laughs> right, that's, that's what I said, like an actual gun. It's yeah. not that quiet. What about you, Declan? Did you ever get in the like, paintball area yourself? Um, I played paintball a few times, but I did do airsoft like milsim events uh, in Arizona for a bit. What you did full on milsim events? What's that like? Hmm. Uh, it's kind of like our uh, Site sixty seven stuff, except more uh, round based. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I always had like this, uh, this like you know, kind kind of like low key fascination about like going like milsims and stuff. I got I got real deep into paintball and airsoft both. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like there was a, there's actually a paintball event that happens annually, like near me. That's literally just D Day, mm-hmm. and it's it's super cool. And then um, there's also a, there's always milsims going on nearby, but it's usually <laughs> like, you know, one, once again, like it's usually like you know proposed scenarios like, oh, it plays the Chechnyans versus the Russians, or like you know just whatever versus whatever. Yeah. And like I don't know. I like camping, and I don't know if, like, that's actually pertinent, but, like, some of these, like, it seems like you actually camp out, and you, like, hang out outside and stuff. Yeah, some of them are full, like, camp and survive, and, I mean, you're obviously a controlled environment, but, you know. Right. There was a place uh, when I was in high school that we went with the uh, trumpet section of my marching band. That the, Actually, the trumpets, the baritones, and the trombones all went. And it was called 20 Degrees. And what it was, was actually a Normandy reenactment sort of thing. And they had a hill that was just under 20 degrees steep. So very steep. Um, like, that doesn't sound like much. Like, people would think, like, 45 degrees. It's like, no, that, that's fucking, like, you can't really climb that safely. But 20 Jeez, degrees is plenty. And, and this thing... This thing was, they literally built cement bunkers. Where on each one, they put two crank-operated... Uh, paintball chain guns you would dress up in these jumpsuits that were made to be wiped because you basically if you died you had to slide back down the the hill on the sides and then get your suit wiped and then re re go in through what were basically the landers they had the full-on porcupines they had and there were a total of four of these bunkers and then you had to either get a shot or you could also hurl some bean bags that were basically grenades and hit this little thing that was behind it that was basically you either shooting the guys on the guns which you could also just shoot them, but they could also respawn and come back in on those. So if they had guys waiting to re-grab the guns, then they would just do that. And right. so there were four of these actual cement bunkers built like the World War II ones that you had to take, and it was basically a who can take the hill faster, and you would do it in rounds. I love that. Yeah, me and um, <laughs> oh my god, little little bit of personal info about me. I have always like done shit with my hands. Like mm-hmm. I love doing tactile things. Like, I learn with my hands. Right. And. Uh, <laughs> uh, some something I might actually be incorporating into channel like later on, or I'm feeling more comfortable with like having you know myself on camera. Yeah. Um, but like I used to, I used to come up with these ideas and I would implement some of them into paintball. Because me and my friends used to play wood ball all the time, and there's a shitload of private property out here, and so we used to like get plywood and just knock together like loose structures that were definitely heavily unsafe. Yeah. Uh, out in the woods. And it was awesome. But like some of the stuff I used to come up with was really cool. And oh man, just th- just like thinking think about those bunkers. I, I had this idea. I never did this one. I had this idea where I wanted to go to the store. And uh, you, you guys know like like the roll away trash cans you use outside, you know what I mean? Like you throw your yeah. tra- throw your yeah. trash bag in there, roll it down. I wanted to go up to like Lowe's and buy like a few of those and then cut like a mail slot, like essentially at eye level, and then cut a hole under it. And then put the wheels onto the top and then cut the lid off and flip it upside down. And then basically use that as a mobile turret. And then basically make it um very angry like, knock droid. Yeah, exactly. So make like two of those and then have a volleyball to bomb and then play assault, where you have like a defensive position and all the attackers have for cover is these two mobile turrets, and they can only move either uh, front and back or left and right but they cannot move diagonally like they're only allowed to move front back left right and they can only shoot in one direction so like they have to they 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 can turn right but they can't like they cannot operate at a diagonal like that was like the rules they couldn't operate at a diagonal yeah. never did it but it was 
it's something I thought about for a while. And then um, one of the ones I did do though is I made some paintball bayonets. Um, so like at the at the places around us, indoor and outdoor, you were allowed to use essentially paint brushes as bayonets because any kind of paint mark on a player would count if it was over the size of a quarter. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's um, fairly standard. Yeah, and so what I did is uh, my mom. <laughs> My mom let like, like took took me up to like a hobby store and I bought like some foam and I cut it into the shape of like a K bar knife, right? And I put like this insert in it, like this PVC insert. And my dad was, you know, also real good with his hands. He let me use like a heat gun and showed me how to do it. Basically, we made a literal like foam K bar, mm -hmm. right? And I made like this like see through like sheath for it, right? And I would fill paint in the bottom of the sheath, just basic like oil paint, but the same stuff in like paintballs. And whenever you press the knife in there, there was an O-ring that I put in like the uh, in like the, like the guard of the knife. So whenever you press it in there, it would lock in place, right? But because the blade was in there, volume displacement would actually push the paint. It would push the paint up the blade and then coat it. Yeah. Right. So like it would just be in the sheath coated, and then whenever you needed to use it, you pull and go. And. Uh, it was just really cool. I was like, I think 12 whenever I was doing that. And, uh, oh God, it was so much fun. I had JB welded very crudely. I had JB welded this, uh, I'm air quoting this mount on my barrel <laughs> to, uh, to mount this fucking bayonet. And I tried desperately to rush someone with that thing. And I never stuck anybody with that oh, fucking no. thing. Never once got shot so many times, so many times trying to run to my friend, Joey. And like, no, nah, just fully got lit up. There was a, uh, <laughs> A YouTube channel I got into uh, like maybe two years ago. That's a guy that owns a airsoft field, and I think it's in like Georgia or something. Anyway, they do multiple times a year like these themed role play events that are multiple days, where like uh, a couple have been like Old West, where everybody uses Old West guns and dresses up in costume, and then they had another one that's basically like not Fallout, you know, kind of <laughs> apocalyptic Fallout. And like Borderlands style, so like, that's really cool. I, I really want to do that sometime. It's just go to one. Show up as Krieg. <laughs> I am the meat bicycle. <laughs> show me a bucket, or bring me a bucket, and I'll show you a bucket. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've told. I know I've told Deco the story, but I don't know if I've told Crix. Like I know that my paintball one, where it's like it was almost melee. Mm -hmm. Well, there are two ones where it's almost melee. One where I got point blanked through through my mouth and had both my lips skinned by the blast. Oh, God, um, that's awful. That was terrible. Do you want to hear that story? Otherwise, the other one is one where I got a guy at gunpoint and had to convince him to surrender so I wouldn't point blank him with a high PSI tipman. I want to hear both of these. However, let's take just a real quick break so I can go grab some coffee real quick. Yeah, okay, go for it. Go for it. Do you want me to switch into the VR thing? Because I could set that yeah, beat up. And go I was gonna, I was gonna tell you, like, yeah, if you want to do that, like, now would be an absolute prime time. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna mute up and I'll set that up. <laughs> All right, I got you. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and deafen up in Discord real quick. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna take a quick break too. Be right back. to get done. Everybody 
think chat's doing good. How you been, Sin? Anything exciting going on? DD, very nice, very nice. What kind of character are you playing? Series are uh, Wookie Daddy in the Star Wars game. You've probably seen that. <laughs> hmm. The Wookie. the Wookie almost got killed in his first session. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I am back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, full disclosure, boys and girls, everybody who's listening, who was here earlier, the accidental soup I made came out pretty good. Came accidental out pretty all right. Soup. Accidental soup. <laughs> also, accidental soup's my band name, for sure. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way it's not. You beat me to it. Nice. No. Uh, <laughs> it scared me. It wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't ready for for the other the other mic that Cursive has. I wasn't prepped for the uh, for, <laughs> for the mic change. <laughs> mic change. Oh, that uh, thing I mentioned is why I have one of the airsoft guns I have, which is a uh, 1892 Winchester lever action. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, there was a. I saw this. Oh my god, I almost bought it. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's just a, like a shitty spring loaded airsoft pistol, but it's a flintlock. Mm -hmm. And um. It literally the way you feed it in is you have to rack the hammer back right and then you pull out like the, the like the ramrod yeah and the ramrod's actually a speed loader so you just jam it down the barrel and you, you just, you just put some bbs down there and then put the ramrod back and then you can fire oh, shit so it's like a blunderbuss <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much and it's so awesome and yeah, that makes sense Might be going to bed soon. Got more bad news from work, so. Uh, sorry to hear that. I can't switch to my Blue Yeti if that's better. Put this one's attached to the visor. Oh, you're you sound good. Yeah, you you sound fine. I just <laughs> I completely forgot that your mic changes in, in Discord whenever you go to your VR set. So I just wasn't. I personally just wasn't prepped <laughs> for the change. That's all. Yeah, it's just got a, a slightly different tone to it. 
But yeah, sorry to hear that, Koala. Don't even trip, though, right? Don't even trip, chocolate chip. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. You'll see. I guess so, we get a little reprieve on uh, telling our life story to uh, well as character in the mummy's back. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't. You're just gonna you ask. To. Oh, that's right. <laughs> like, well, suddenly I have to ask about. This. So eventually, I will actually get art made for my character. That's another thing I gotta do. Hmm. And. uh she can take off the uh, the bindings that are keeping her looking like a normal couple. <laughs> oh, yeah? I highly recommend Belladonna for that. Yeah. Yeah, she's done some art for me also. Came out real good. Because Div is, um, you know, a tiefling, so... Uh, oh, really? Based on her parentage, uh, her, her curves are more pronounced than a kobold. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I figure I don't know I don't know if all of Sarik's stuff is going to come to pass, but if it does, that'd be great. If it doesn't, oh well. But we'll see. He's I'm starting to like more or less play him as breaking out of his shell. So like Yeah. Should be fun. Which is funny is he still has very shit social skills, which are just not good. <laughs> I see the window said the blind man let's see if that works oh yeah gotta get uh gotta get that thing gotta get that scored source i mm. see nothing there's nothing here but a color there's one yeah color. you're streaming gray or yeah red. i know what's wrong gotcha uh you will get it I just gotta open my stream labs. Yeah, you're good, no worries. And that should pop it up then. Somebody's on the right one. So we were talking today at work about a pretty funny story that uh, a coworker of mine had heard about like this couple that was trying to come home from, I wanna say it was somewhere overseas. I wanna say it was either the Philippines or it was somewhere around there, right? Mm -hmm. Basically this is couples, you know, or, or not couples, a family. Those are tourists, right? And they were out and about, like, doing their thing. And they came across an actual, like, true-to-life landmine just out and about, like, whenever they were out there. Oh, okay? shit. Old, old, old leftover landmine. Mm -hmm. So you come across a landmine with, like, your family around. You're obviously not going to, like, pick it up, right? You're going to, like, report it, you know, you and, like, think, do the yeah. responsible thing. No, these dudes dig it up. They dig it up, and they stow it away and decide they're going to take it home with them, Right? And so, like, don't ask me how it never went off. It hasn't gone off, right? And so they go to, like, the airport to go home, right? You go to the airport, they get their bags checked in. And then, like, you know, the whatever whatever TSA is in this, in this other country is like, hey, man, like, you can't have a landmine in your backpack. Like, you just, you simply can't. <laughs> what the fuck? And I guess, like. The, the funniest part about the story is like they were confused as to why it is they couldn't have a landmine on their person whenever they were taking a flight. Like they, they were confused. They were like, but it's just a souvenir. Like, you know what you're saying? Like, we're not going to use it nefariously. <laughs> it's like, that's not the point, though. Like, that's not. <laughs> Don't worry about your intent with the landmine. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was super funny. But yeah. <laughs> hmm. So, Deckel. Yeah. Are there any like particular milestones or like goals you have in mind right now for like short or like you know, I guess like short term, you know, as opposed to like long term goals? Is there any short term you got going on? Hmm. First thing I need to do is uh, come up with a stream schedule I can actually stick to and do it. <laughs> I mean, fair, but, but I'm no, hoping like... to uh, by the uh, 
end of the year have 10k on Twitter might be doable and uh, maybe 1k on Twitch I'm halfway there <laughs> that'd be awesome hell yeah yeah I'm uh, I don't know man I'm like pumping the brakes on Twitter to be honest I don't know I just can't get into it I just can't it's just not for me I don't think I mean there's other ways you can go yeah if you yeah. can make short video content, obviously YouTube, maybe even TikTok. I've considered doing that. Like, I really need to because I know that there's um, some video editing programs out there that really aren't that bad to use. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know what I'm doing with them. But I, it can't be. I'm aware that it's a whole thing, but like, it can't be that hard. There, there's no way. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. It is. I just don't. Uh, at least not in like the context I was using it. I don't think I'm going to use socials the way I was. I just don't really care for it. I've been using it now like more as like a personal fun thing, just like fucking around and like messing with people. Yeah. And like that's been really cool. I don't know. I've met a lot of people through it, so I can't really complain. No, for sure. Like, I feel you. I mean, that's how I met. Honestly, a pretty good chunk of people too, I suppose. But. I feel like most of the people I've met has either been like word of mouth, Discord, or like by random luck and chance, like, or by like just friend of a friend. You know what I mean? I mean, I met Stormy through there, and now they're a part of our game. So, yeah, right, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Is like it's a really good thing, but I met Stormy through you. <laughs> so <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> And then, like, Katori, who's, like, one of the primary artists for, you know, like, like my channel and stuff, like, for, like, my emotes and such. I li That was by chance, purely by chance. Like, I, sp I literally, sp like, spun a wheel. And then, like, it happened to, you know, land on a game. And then I happened to raid Katori. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. Plus, I just, I don't, I don't know. It's really good. I just don't think it's for me. I don't think so. That's fair. Here's if I saw mushrooms for a second. Yeah, that was interesting. That was me playing with the back. That was me playing with the background. I don't think it actually worked. I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Give me a moment. You're fine. There's no rush. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's a decal. Yes. Listen, real talk. Uh -huh. If you had to, if you had to somehow rationalize Santa Claus, right, in terms of like tabletop magics, how the fuck does Santa Claus work? Well, there's my darling. Um, how does Santa Claus work? Yeah, in the terms of tabletop, like, does he clone himself? Is he a master wizard? Like, what's going on? Mm. What do you think? If you if you had to rationalize it, if you had to rationalize it and make it make it into a thing that like actually makes world sense. A time mage conjurer. <laughs> time mage. It's it, time magic is so fucking strong. I don't care what path it's in. It's like the best. Like, hey man, you want to be super strong? Yeah, control time. That's it. That's all you need. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Now I gotta Hello. add a source for Discord here. Yeah, how does that work? Add a well, pop make the uh, pop out window in Discord and then add it as a window capture. What are you, some kind of super genius or something? Window capture should work just fine, and then all you have to do is just make it and pop out the Discord one, and they won't see your entire Discord. Let's hide that. This avatar actually can't flick you off. But my actual good one looks... Actually, wait, I think I can turn that off. I can put on my good avatar. Is it add a media source? Is that what you said? Uh, add a window capture source. Bum, 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 bum. Window capture. There it is. Add source. Voila, and then... Um, one downside appears to be I don't have Discord selected, it freezes the video. Hmm. 
Holy shit, that actually works real good. Yeah, right? So, make this a little bit more bigger. I feel like there should be a way to make that just linger, but. Maybe, maybe if I ran Discord it. as an admin, because it seems like it's getting losing priority in the background. That's the same issue that it affects my game when I'm doing the, uh, what you call it, the, uh, the player map doesn't update unless I click on it. Yeah. Yeah, even my busted ass got this thing working. <laughs> <laughs> what a good day. Ooh, bouncy. <laughs> bouncy? Yeah, I jumped oh, up in frame there a minute. <laughs> oh. Apologies. No, you're good. Uh, I don't think Jackal, anybody's going to complain. <laughs> Jackal, I see what you mean now about like having to have like the Discord window selected. Yep. I see. That's a okay. Okay, hold on a second. Gear Dragon in my chat. I love this one. Santa Claus is actually a fake identity taken up by Shaika the Mini. They do it once a year for funsies, but also to spy on the entire world populace to expand their knowledge of everything. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> that, that sounds, sounds very fitting. What do you think, Cursive? You have to rationalize Santa Claus to tabletop, like, like basically like tabletop world friendly like how, how do you do it um let's see i mean check out the many fits i like the idea that it's a mantle that's handed down to someone who needs to do it so it's basically like a like a penance but also something like then they find someone themselves and then that's like the tim allen version. basically like <laughs> kind of except someone who needs to do it who like yeah. you know needs a lesson and then they hand it down to someone else the next year. I like to imagine it's all the hat. And the hat is actually just like <clears throat> a super powerful magical item <laughs> that essentially whenever you put it on, it binds to you. And then just like, just, I mean, downloads essentially like just, I mean, fucking terabytes and terabytes of information. And it essentially changes like your entire persona and ego. I think you just created an SCP like event. Blog. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think it's exactly what it is. I think it's basically a curse item. <laughs> and as far as like, as far as like how he gets around everywhere, I like to imagine he's actually just a really powerful alchemist and wizard. And so like, he really does have like Palpatine as cloning facilities and just makes like millions of other Santa Clauses. But then, like, not all of them work out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sometimes you just have fucked up clones. <laughs> yeah, you get sad Christmas. Yeah, hair is still messed up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to turn off the, the bones. You can turn it off for your view through the, uh, I think, private or safety settings. Unfortunately, it doesn't affect how other people in VR chat see you, which is... Aha, but it works for this. Yes, it does. Hey. There. Now I can wear my good avatar. Hmm. Pull him a little short. There we go. <laughs> so cute. So. Oh, good news on that one, Goblin. Uh, I do have a box from my birthday gift from my parents that I can put the VR in so we can send that to you. Oh, yeah? Oh. Nice. You're getting the Oculus. We we've talked about it before. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll be able to mayhaps fix it. Nice. It's entirely possible the problem was on my end. It's just I couldn't get it to work and we couldn't and I mean I'm hoping not since someone was nice enough to get me the new one and I'd hate to find out that it was my ineptitude, but um could be a cable. I know the cables eventually go bad. Yeah, they do. Which... And the problem is that it is an it is a CV2, so yeah, you'd have to go to eBay right. probably the to parts get, a get more and more expensive. That's okay. And that's what I had to do to get the uh, earbud fixed. I need to find something nice to wrap it in. 
<laughs> well, they have this stuff, right? It's wild. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. They generally make it Bubble out of around. trees, right? Hear me out. Uh -huh, hear, hear me out. They, they generally make it out of trees, right? You can't see it. I'm doing fucking weird shit with my hands right now. <laughs> make it out of trees, okay? And it's usually called paper, right? You just wrap it in this shit called paper. Okay. Sometimes they even have hey, new. You, <laughs> you see this? <laughs> <laughs> or just throw it really hard. I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> I'll catch it. It'll be fine. Shit, I've still got my box in the closet somewhere. <laughs> for my documents. Yeah, I wish I still had mine. <laughs> so, like... I literally I had it and threw it away, like, the one I had to clean. But yeah, go ahead. You're good. So, like, since since you brought it up on stream, I have to ask, like, are you still wanting to try and do some some variant of, like, doing, like, D&D streams in VR? Well, yeah. Be cool. It's just one of those. I think it'd be fun. There's literally D and D worlds and stuff like that where they have the table and the thing. Like you could do it there. Um, I did. I have run sessions while in it. Uh, I did that with Dragon's Dogma. I actually started running from in here because the fun part is, uh, I don't have the thing here. But what I could do is this avatar actually has something fun. So if I enable it, it's like VR chat D and D rooms. They actually have like dice and all the other good stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, the biggest downside is getting maps and stuff in there. Uh, there's got to be a way. It can't be impossible. There's got to be a way. Well, and I've honestly also given thought to, with the success of Site 67, if I had more time doing a small-scale group with Pathfinder lore, but, like, Site 67. Yeah. Where we do events. And, like, LARPing, I literally basically. talked with, I think, Gear Dragon about just taking the campaign and just like it's like if number one if we had somebody who could like phase can make worlds really fast but he doesn't like fantasy um or at least hasn't expressed the like of fantasy but like it'd be easy enough to make the maps if we had somebody who was good at it and then basically we just go through and we could literally run it we could run it it just wouldn't be turn-based it would just be like no this is just role play based now and it's just basically larping it's larping an actual campaign and then go through and do it and then stream it like, we could literally get somebody on to be cameramen, and it would be dope as shit. And it would just be like, I mean, that would be good to even put on, like, like yeah. whatever, like, record for permanent part of my random stuff. gestures. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. It, it would just take some production time and money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Much like most of this stuff. But, like, taking one of the adventure paths and just figuring it out, finding avatars... Um, yeah, working within the VR chat that's... limitations. Hell yeah, yeah! I need to get more into it. Like I, there, there's actually like a lot of stuff about VR that I'm pretty interested in. There's also like some gimmicky shit that I like. I know is never going to work the way I want it to, but like I still want to use it for whatever reason. Like what? Like what? Have you seen like these? Have you seen these like? Bull <laughs> I'm calling him bullshit because I don't. I'm calling him bullshit, and anybody out there who's about, who I'm about to catch hate from, listen here. They got a two for one special on these fucking hands. All right, check us out. Like, there's these VR like rifle things. Like, they're like molds for like a rifle, right? And I feel like they're not particularly ergonomic. Like, I feel like they're probably not going to articulate the way that I want them to articulate. Um, we've had people who use the weights. There are ones where they're basically just weights for you to uh uh basically like get the right feel for like them and they, they plug into your your handle so then you can use them interesting yeah it's like these full-on like that like that sounds cool the thing i'm referring to is like this full-on like cast like it literally looks like a rifle almost like it doesn't resemble like oh that's an m4 but like it just resembles like a general rifle-esque like body it seems like, like that would be fine if the game would have to be specifically made <laughs> yeah, exactly. or at least the avatar would have to be specifically made work with that proportion <laughs> that's the other part that makes me really laugh about it like the idea of like you not having the rifle out and so like what exactly is happening you know what i mean like <laughs> your what, hands like, are just sticking out there yeah <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, look at my tactical grip. Gripping that air. Yeah, grip in real life. Call <laughs> <laughs> I was grabbing water earlier. See grip. <laughs> I mean, that's one downside. I'm basically one-handing my rifle. I mean, the, I do like the Oculus. Nice ergonomic. Yeah. But that was. <laughs> I made a coworker so mad at me the other day. He's a he's a type that, like, once again, boys and girls, I can't get super specific. Uh, you know, N NDAs are real. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, uh, this guy I work with, he, <laughs> outside of work, he's the type that carries the biggest fucking knife you've ever seen in your life, and yeah. then also an open carrying it like a gigantic handgun. Like, and the only reason I'm saying it in such a fashion is because it's ridiculous in proportion. Like, it's Not just a big it's guy. Very, Man's about to carve up a deer with it. Like, it's basically a machete. Like, this dude basically has a bush knife. And then just, like, a full-size open carry. Which, like, Breaking. that's fine. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. No, just... <laughs> so, like, there, there was a day we all went up to, like, a restaurant. And he sat in the corner and he had, like, walk past, like, three of my friends. And it was just, like, putting it in their face. It was super funny. But, uh, anyways, I made him mad the other day because, like, I kept calling him a mall ninja. And he had no idea what I was referring to. <laughs> And it was because he was looking at these, uh, he was looking at these, like, I'm air quoting, these swords. And they were just, like, the biggest, edgiest of lords, like, kind of swords you've ever seen in your life. And, uh, yeah, it was so fucking funny. He did so much shit. I was like, what are you going to do? Are you going to open care of those? Like, what's, 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 what's going on with that? Like, what are you... Yeah. Also, where are you right now, Curse? Are you in the back rooms? She's what's, what's going exploring on? our new site. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is Site 67 now. Nice. I assume this is a part of the back rooms that no one gets to see. I mean, you're we, not apparently some of our group wrong. do do back rooms role plays. I can There is a back rooms map. Oh god. And this is Site 67. Nice. This Never is light containment. <laughs> this is light containment. Yeah. There's yeah. several cells. I actually around. was playing as. Yeah, you can see like behind me, there's writing on the ground here. Um, I could turn the camera into like a more of a webcam oh, thing and show you, but the, um, yeah, I was playing as Bloody Mary last night, so I was literally stalking one of the squads I actually stalked and killed half of was Deckles, um, <laughs> because people got it was got, a calculated uh, move. <laughs> it was, but uh, people also it's also uh, entirely the researchers' fault who uh, basically uh, ignored the fact that. Uh, like she had certain i made bloody mary you said her you'd say her name she'd pay yeah, attention if you were derisive and i made it that she will kill anyone who uh who's taken a life regardless of the reason so like and i've made her an scp at this point and so it's basically like even our own mtf were getting would get killed so they had to put her with researchers that didn't uh that hadn't killed anyone and then the problem is one researcher who shall we name nameless on stream uh, was being very derisive and she started getting very aggro at him because she still has almost no patience. And so at one part, I literally came out of a, I can actually show you, I was in the cell. I made it that anything reflective because her cell is utterly mirrored because mirrors also capture her. Mm -hmm. But she can also uh, transmit herself to any mirror and basically that sound travels through mirrors for her. So she hears you through the mirror. Huh. And so he was getting derisive. So I had her pass out of the mirror and grabbed his shoulder, which in VR now that works. So I actually grabbed him and spun him around. And so then he saw that I was literally about to, because like one of her go-tos for someone, she's not trying to, if she's trying to kill you, she reaches in and just grabs your heart and just stops it. And then if she's just mad at you, like, but you're not something she wants to kill, she gouges out your eyes. Um, and so she was about to gouge out his eyes and then they calmed her down. And then... They, the site was under attack. Deckel was in a firing line out here, and I was invisible and basically watching. And basically, he, he started saying her name and being derisive in another cell where there were other reflected materials, such as like computers. So then she came out and started stalking outside of the cell and watching them. And then he literally threw one of the researchers who he knew was a murderer at her and said, Well, this one has murdered people and gets gleeful about it. And as much as they tried to be reasonable, she's not that reasonable. Yeah. But they all basically served as body shields between uh, him and her, even when she started appearing like behind them. Because I was playing her very ghostly, she'd flicker and then flicker somewhere else. 
because I can warp that way um, by just like, you know, jumping that way while use. Oh, yeah, I was, I was modeling it after like a like literally when she's hunting, I literally model it after Phasmo because like I just charge at somebody with one arm out and they managed to dissuade her from attacking the kid who had murdered people, well, killed people, not murdered. She calls them murderers. But um, but then there was a part I was chasing Deckel's squad with just one hand out. Like, I could literally put it on here on stream so you can see how this looks. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I chased them through the, the hallways. One of their cybernetic soldiers gave his life to distract her, basically got closer to her and then ran away so that she could chase him. She caught him and killed him. And then another one did it by saying her name in the mirrors of her cell while he was sealed in, which then got her recaptured. That was basically the plan as soon as we knew you were out. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Basically, I would just uh, not to uh, just reach out for people and just. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. <laughs> Have a lot of fun avatars. Oop. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's hey. her uh, hazmat researcher. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically my character from an, from another dimension. So instead of being a uh, military, she's she's a researcher. So she's in a hazmat suit. It even says uh, hex in hexadecimal right there. Even though we we and then she knowing that my character is named Hex, uh, changed her name to Jinx. Because like cat like and it's a fun so, avatar. Do you plan on like you know like streaming more the Sci Six Seven stuff in the future or what? I do. It's just we get enough people now that I, Deckel gave me a graphics card that I need to do it. It's just I'm tentative about breaking open the case because when I first went to do it, it has screws that are more kind of not not welded but sealed on, and I'm afraid that if I crack it open, it'll always be loose. And so it's one of those. I need to make sure that I have not just one day off, but two days off to just dedicate to breaking it open and then seeing if I had the clearance to even put the right card in. It has a big card that's dimensions are similar, very similar. Like we're talking about an inch difference on two of the, the uh, dimensions. Mm -hmm. So it's like an inch is enough that it could be a problem because the case is smallish. It's a Dell case. Sorry, but... I'm an absolute child. An inch is definitely enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> couldn't help myself alright oh, yes. listen all the pieces of the puzzle huh? do you want to see the avatar this is the avatar uh, gear dragon uh, made for the weakless this is oh, nice. one of the ones from that campaign I told you about that's really cool it's utterly custom made and it's I mean there were pieces of other avatars pre-built that she put together so that it has like all these different parts of it and then Basically, the weakless have an infectious oil that comes out, and this one does it through her claws, because this is like the queen one. And basically, they add you to her hive, effectively. But very close to one of the, the ones, like a character art that I used for her, so it's about as close as we could get it for VR's sake, so. Yeah, that's wonderful. Fun to show off. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, a lot of fun ones. <laughs> this one's supposed to be an actual drag. Hmm? How have you not made Carmen San Diego into an SCP yet? <laughs> oh shit! Have Carmen San Diego. Yeah, like have you not made Carmen San Diego SCP? <laughs> we could do that for non-canon. I'm like, literally you, talking with uh, Gail about making a non-canon where it's Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like literally Yu-Gi-Oh and. and you go what? I'm sorry. There is not there is not a Carmen San Diego uh, avatar. Are Ooh. you serious? I know. Recreate the Cell versus Yugi battle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Yugi boy. <laughs> that would be wonderful. No, no, but like you could do so you do like Carmen San Diego, but like make it to where SCP thing is like basically you can never find her because she's just a black market smuggler. But she just sneaks up on people, drugs them, and steals their fucking organs. Like, that's the whole SCP. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's not even supernatural, just a terrible event. You wake up in a bathtub full of ice cubes. <laughs> with, a, with a note, like, written on you. 
into uh, a hospital. Both and a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> both your kidneys are gone. You wake up. There's an IV in your arm. It's just full of. It's just full of blood. <laughs> Says you have about one hour, fucker. <laughs> Arthur. 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 God damn it, Arthur. <laughs> I don't pay to make some money. To Haiti, Arthur. I lost all the faith, Arthur. Damn it, Arthur. Have you lost all your faith in me? <laughs> oh, man. I actually, so check this out. Like, I was sitting on the old porcelain throne the other day, right? And, uh, you know, doing doing my business. And I was watching, like, shorts, right? Mm-hmm. And I was scrolling through, and one of them was actually the scene. Spoiler alert, Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur fucking dies. Um, and so, like, a part of the, the scene was literally Arthur's death scene. I just, it was like while I was scrolling, it showed up as a short, and I was so sad. Like, I was immediately so sad. Yeah, uh, that same program I used to do the uh, voice uh, for the Gladys thing I made for, uh, for that one tweet. Um, I made a clip that was for Dr. Caress of Site 67 because she got really emotional when Arthur died and um, I actually made one with Arthur telling her not to cry about his death because life is wor- worth living and etc etc cetera, et cetera. and it, it, it actually sounds really good but it's like she just couldn't believe that I made like because oh my god that website is so good is that what that Gladys thing was that was a, that was a tweet of yours that you made with a voice changer I didn't make the tweet. Someone else made the tweet, and I saw it on Imager's front page. And someone said, oh. "Someone should put this to Cave Johnson." And so first I went to, tr- and then I saw someone else said, "Someone should put it to Glados." And then other people said it should be the apocalyptic announcer. I don't have a filter for the apocalyptic announcer. And then I'm no good at Cave Johnson, but I have another friend who is yeah. um, from Site 67. She can do it, and it's funny because she can do it amazingly. Like it sounds pristine. Like it's literally him. Um, one life and uh, I can do screw life. <laughs> Take back your lemons. Find the guy who well, gave them to you and burn his fucking events. house down. <laughs> <laughs> she's using she's using him for an event as a, as another site director who's basically gonna be like, all right, I got good news and bad news. Good news is we made sure that this entity has no weapons. It, it has no weapons as we sent it to your site. The bad news is it can kill you just fine without him, and it's probably faster for it anyways. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like that. That's cave. Yep. Honestly. Um. Yeah, I've always been able to do the Glados one because I literally have, and I could literally turn on the filter. Um, I have a character that I named Alchemist, um, who plays as the sites. Uh, I do a special kind of event called simulations, where it's basically our people are getting matrixed into a simulation, and one of our head researchers, one of the players actually, one of the players in the group, who's also one of the members of staff. Um, is basically in canon the guy who made her um, because he's so smart. He's actually a koala's uh, kind of uh, father brother. Koala would know better. They're they're really, but they're very close. Um, and basically, she was in RP created by him. Actually, my creation. But you know, it's funner to put it where. Oh God, my eyes twitching. Um, and basically, she runs. She has authority to run trainings. And I went through and talked to the O5, got all the proper ones. So it's like, yeah, you actually go in there, and she's training you, kind of Matrix style. But it's going to be leading into a bigger story, so that I can do digital-based events, kind of Sao-ish, kind of Matrix-ish. And because I have a big story that's utterly unique, but has it's going to allude to Matrix, um, Sao, and uh, Ghost in the Shell. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh God, I got to get off this avatar. It's twitching like I'm having. <laughs> You want to say fun one? Yeah. What? <laughs> the Green Ranger. Who's y'all's favorite Power Ranger? Let me know right now. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Be honest. honest. The Green Ranger. I, well, Green I kind of think too. But... It's supposed to be able to play. Oh, because it tried to play all of them at once. <laughs> For the record, anybody, uh, surprise, surprise, my favorite was the Red Ranger. Red Ranger. Go figure. Do you guys know? I forget uh, which which uh, part of Power Rangers it was, but like the uh, there was a guy who played. I want to say it was either the Green Ranger or someone else. The Rangers for sure got into mixed martial arts, like unironically, like after Power Rangers, <laughs> like <laughs> like became a pro fighter. It was pretty cool. Yugi, you fool! It seems you've been seduced again. 
<laughs> I literally talked about uh, with Gil that I want to do an event where it is just us on uh oh I just warped past my camera there we are um where we're gonna have like Yugi Kaiba uh Joey Wheeler and my Valentine just running around sites summoning monsters and just like literally and like because they were worried like wait what happens if like you know the people don't know like because I, I use example they do a firing line they shoot at Yugi and then Yugi's like ha your attacks would would have ripped through my flesh if not for my trap card mirror force it'll reflect the firepower right back at you and then make a gesture <laughs> and then <laughs> but see that's the fun part is see like normally we make them we'd make them see like okay this is what this does this i was like we don't tell them we just let them role play they either role play getting hit by their own bullets or they just stand there like the fuck nothing happened but we didn't kill him <laughs> oh dear um oh shit you know what we should do huh Team Rocket. Team Rocket comes to steal our Pokemons. I love the idea of Yugi <laughs> just like... I love the idea of Yugi being like a real-life person. He's just completely unhinged and just fully believes like these things are happening but they're not. Like they're not happening at all. He's just throwing down cards at random passersby. <laughs> they're just playing cards and he's like, oh, you stepped onto my trap card. <laughs> Playing some at people. Oh my god. But yeah. I think I think it's about most of most of the stuff, at least most of the points I had here. Like, I didn't really like write down that many. There wasn't a whole lot of direction with uh, tonight's stream. But there was some I wanted to I'm like, having fun. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, for sure. The show. I <laughs> the Jesse, I love that. Jesse, you know what this one has, though, that's amazing? Oh, dear. No, you can't see it hardly. Yeah, you can't see. It's too far down. Okay. Well, I can fix that once, I, oh, once it stops. <laughs> okay, I'll just back up. I'm back up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I love that. <laughs> Let's see, how best can I show this one off? Uh, I think I need to get further away from you. Oh, not that. <laughs> oh, God, it started again. <laughs> nope, almost. A <laughs> little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> this fucking model's animations. Get out of here. Oh. Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave. Taking my shit to go. <laughs> But yes, if you want to see sites, I know that I have shown up. Actually, most of my videos don't have it uh, up front one. I've actually uh, been doing a lot of reading into. Uh... Oh, hey, it's your actual size six seven person. Yes. I'm actually getting a new one because originally it was just going to be a new one just to represent my alpha one and betterness, but uh, not better. That that came out wrong, but better equipment. Um, but the new one's going to be kind of sci-fi ish. It's very fitting now, especially as site director. I have an office on this map. I'm waiting to get oh, my yeah. Alpha 1 one. Yeah, you gotta get your custom rolling so we can... And then I'm also getting a custom for my character I play as Wrath, which has the same outfit that Deckel wears, which is actually very intimidating. You, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Crix. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of a... A mixed bag. People see one of us coming and don't necessarily know which one they're gonna get. <laughs> well, that right there. I like that mask. It's really cool. Yeah, and it actually has a red. It has a uh, red um, night vision, which is fun. I love that. But because it hasn't really come up yet. I mean, my character totally would murder someone on a command, but. Uh... So far, he's developed a very personable personality that people like. It hasn't come up yet. Like, <laughs> one day, someone's going to joke and be like, Ha, Paul, I'll fucking kill you. And then you're just like, blap. 
<laughs> it's fucking kill right away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's it's funny because I play another character named Wrath because there's these things called the Arms of the O5, which are all based off the sins. And so we have Wrath, we have Lust, we have Pride. And so it's like, and I play Wrath, and she's supposed to be very quiet. She only talks because she's, she's in command of some situations. But otherwise, a big part of her is like, if an MTF got in her way, normally we work around it, we work realistically. Wrath's an answer would be bullet. You get yeah. one warning to get out of her way, and then just blam. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't see my gun in the video, but... um. Yeah, but it is like... And so, game. whenever... Whenever uh, Deckel uh, is playing as their Alpha 1, I'm in the same outfit as Wrath, and there have been some confusion moments. And it's like, if someone takes Deckel's kind demeanor and tries to get in their way, Deckel will deal with it usually unless there's an order against it. But if they do that to Wrath the wrong way or in too dire of a time, they're going to get shot in cannon. And it's rather funny. And, and they know this. They like, I haven't had to do it. We thought we would. Like, me, me and uh, one of the O5 were literally like, yeah, that's probably going to happen the first day and everyone's going to like be scared of her. No, it didn't even have to happen. They knew just from the way I roleplayed her that Wrath will shoot you. Wrath will kill you. <laughs> and so... We're literally trying to get uh, a different model into VR chat um, to play as Wrath, um, which is from one of the Fallout ones, which we're trying to get the Black Widow armor. That's the one you sent um, a picture of. Yes. The day and so then that will play as Wrath. Yeah, that's really cool. Yes. yes. I actually managed to get all the the file pieces of it. And since it's like, you know, it's non-profit stuff, so the only thing with that one would be is I'd want to ask permission if I started streaming the site stuff again. It's like that one would be kind of focus, and Wrath is who I play in a lot of the events where it's like if we're not on the site, because right. you know if my character is supposed to be the site director, she's not going to be going in the field. Speaking of nonprofit stuff, I'm very excited for our uh, for charity event coming up. Oh yeah, I am so excited for that. You I have no idea. Yeah, I'm really, really, really big fan of it. I, I mean, <laughs> have you actually? I'm uh, literally going to show off that deck any chance I get. Have so you had I'm people's? Uh, come up to Wrath as, and try to talk to you like you're me, because I've had a couple times where they thought I yes. was Wrath. <laughs> yes, I've had that twice or where I've walked in and people are like, oh, hey, Deckel, and I'm just like, man. <laughs> and I, I've had a couple of hacks, which is funny. Which... It'd be funny if you didn't say anything, just kind of mm -hmm. like put your head down very, like, dejected. <laughs> Insane. Well, and some people, some people can recognize our body language is different because VR shows that. Even though, yeah. like, yes, this is an animation showing me run, but your body, like, because like your half I'm, body, like, yeah. Real talk, mental, like mental health wise, like one of the the other event managers who I who I talk with a lot, actually two of them, uh, who I talk with a lot, can recognize if I'm in a, if if I'm having like a bad mental state day just from seeing me in VR. I won't have to say a damn thing, and they'll just really be like, "What's wrong?" And so it's like, and it's amazing to, to see that. And it's just a level of connection through digital that I have that I hadn't expected to exist. Oh, so it's good to know, like, that's going to be just be some shit that I'm going to natively, natively end up doing. Like, yeah, you can I tell real... moods by how people hold their head. And, you know, I've got a real bad know. habit of doing that in real life. Just, like, measuring people's guides and, like, just fucking doing all that. Ugh. Well, it's... like... And there's nice. good parts of it, too. Yeah. It's nice to do, but also I feel like it, it gets on some people's nerves because, like, I'm a nervous person generally, like, in real life. And so, like, a lot of it's, like, watching people's hands or, like, you know, just kind of, like, measuring their body language and, like, shit like that. Yeah. Well, but, that like, makes sense. It's just the way it is, you know? Like, and I've been doing it for a decade, so it's just, like, it's I can't really... It's not something that just turns off. So, right. like... I feel like if I get VR, and end up doing that shit, like that same shit all the time. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's like probably a good skill life. for our roleplay stuff. <laughs> but like, if I do that in real life, then I can only assume that I would do it in a, in a in a media where like, you know, like, hey, this is not real life, but this is basically the uncanny valley. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like I'd end up doing the same shit. I mean, but there's nothing wrong with that because like. I mean, me, Deckel, and Gear Dragon will have ones where we'll just chill and, like, go to some sort of entertainment world and just, like, enjoy each other's company. And there's a level of connection of just, like, you, you know, always know you're not actually sitting next to someone, especially once you're done. But for the moment, you can kind of get lost in it. And that's something that VR, I've always said is good at. Because, like, I've often forgotten where my stuff is and whacked my knuckles. 
even almost broke my hand once but this is different because like you're literally like it's it felt like the gap between like you know me and them was a lot shorter yeah. right the last time i was in vr chat i went through a portal and found a small panda who then sang to me i mean that was fun hell yeah <laughs> You were both there. <laughs> yes. The treble. Yeah, we went to meet him too. Tri treble plays. Yeah. And then I went after that Star Wars game. And he tried to make a. Uh, I mean, he did make a uh, bit of the song based off of uh, Republic Commando, which was fun. He got inspired oh, and played that because we raided him. I've yeah, we were. We, me and Deckel raided him, and so he asked like what we wanted to do. And so I, so I, he says like, let's do some Star Wars stuff. What's your favorite Star Wars? And so. I mentioned the Republic Commando medley was always a was always awesome. Yeah. And so he actually took it and ran with it. What what a good dead oh, idea. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, he just, you know, started pulling out the uh instrumentals and making loops and put it all together. <laughs> yeah. For the record, I went to a different room previous to that. I don't think we talked about this. I went into that portal, right? Yeah. Ended up in a different room with a bunch of portals and then went to a different portal and that's where I found trouble. Or no, wait, no, I'm thinking of two different times. I'm sorry. If I was with you guys, I walked into that portal, found Treble. That's what happened. Because yeah. you know, we just walked right back into that portal and found him. There was a different time I walked into a different portal. So I was like, I wonder what happened this time. I walked in, and then I was immediately met with Aaron Yeager's gigantic titan who was fully nude, and he knelt down to, like, whisper something in my ear. Oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This isn't really my room. <laughs> and I went to the next room. So... Uh, we were playing mini golf one night and like I just accidentally backed into a portal and we wound up on this like huge Halloween themed adventure map and spent like hours just solving the adventure. It was fun. <laughs> you had to get the avatar. It had an avatar that you could only get if you beat it and we were just like, we're going to do it. Uh, that's dope. <laughs> that's real cool. It was actually a pretty cool avatar. There was one of like, it looked like a, like a Victorian little girl and then the other one was... Uh, a more ghostly version was, uh, yeah like a ghost version that if you weren't standing close enough uh you couldn't see her but then if she got if she was in a mirror you could see her as a ghost and it was like but it wasn't like an accident it was like no it made her look actually even scarier and it's like that's pretty cool mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome yeah <laughs> yeah you know there there is some stuff in vr i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to explore if i inevitably get it but it should be fun should be fun for sure i eventually like not like my current model which fucking hi boys and girls uh hi. soon enough models coming out uh but uh, aside from my current model like the next one i'm gonna get is gonna be a lot more a lot more in tune with what i actually want um so that one i'm probably going to try and get like I'm obviously gonna get a full reference sheet and stuff, but I'm gonna try to actually get like a full like VR model and all like the whole nine for it. Yeah, of course. By by the time that one comes around, I should already be like probably pretty deep into a bunch of shit that's gonna involve a 3D model. So, so I've got uh, the person who did my model is working on some rigging upgrades for me right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Noise. Because I've only got basically two axis tracking right now it's just gonna do the third and then also just improve the quality and the face tracking oh that's really cool uh, i want to show mine off so bad but i can't <laughs> i literally can't i said i was gonna wait for certain things i'm still waiting and i'm being patient i'm being a good fucking boy and it's really hard all right it's very hard it's not easy mm -hmm. <laughs> very badly i have two uh webcams over here with electric tape over them and I very badly want to uh, remove the old lens cap and get to it, but like I can't. <laughs> By the way, boys and girls, I am paranoid as fuck. I do not have my cameras here uncovered. It's not happening. I mean, you're gonna have to to run your model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's different. That's that. I'm I've come to terms with that, <laughs> but <laughs> like just regularly, no, absolutely not. For sure not. But yeah. Hmm. at any rate it's starting to get to be that hour i've got some stuff going on tomorrow so i was probably gonna start doing some wrap up that's Is there cool. anything else you guys want to you guys want to touch up on before we uh before we start wrapping up mm, i can't think of anything 
Mm-hmm. I want everybody to go and follow Cursive Angel. Yes, please. Please, oh. please, please. <laughs> and also go show Dakle some love. Yeah. And also, if you happen to stop on by, drop me a follow. Yeah, drop a... Yeah, uh, only only two <laughs> Yeah. Uh, for sure, well, go over I... and check out Dakle and Cursive's channel. Their name is... Or their, their Twitch channel names are in the video title. Peace. Well, thank you so much for, for having us, though. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah, for sure. And once again, like these are mostly like like I said, pilot episodes. I'm gonna do five of them. They're gonna be various. They're, they're gonna be different in their design. Um, <laughs> you know, like, it's just fun to fuck around different formats. And then, yeah, yeah. I'm saving the vods as well, and then those are gonna get edited and mess with, and just have some fun with it. So, I don't even know if this will be an actual podcast. But you know what it has been? Fucking fun. And then, uh, everybody, join us on Monday. Yes, Monday. Wait, are, are we are we doing? Hey, omniscient voice in my head. Are we actually doing session Monday? Like, what's what's going on with that? Are we yeah, doing, are we doing Star Wars? I'm planning to at least, as long okay. as we have everybody. Oh. <laughs> I, th- I think we are. Definitely yeah. gonna. I'll uh, be there. Gonna, are you gonna... Okay, yeah. So, hey, boys and girls, come hang out with us Monday. I'm playing a Wookie. It's a great time. <laughs> I'm playing a Jedi, who goes slicey mm-hmm. slicey and makes people uh, have less parts. Mm. <laughs> Full disclosure, I want you to know the series of events that happened when Crash died, right? Just real quick. Mm-hmm. Here's what happened. Crash dies, right? First actual, like, PC death I've had for one of my PCs in, like I said, three and a half, four years outside of outside of the Halloween game where I got my head removed, right? Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> I haven't died in a while. And so that happened. And then um, I got up to go get something to drink. And Rose is in the other room. She goes, hey, how's it going? And I was like, it's going so good. I'm fully dead. <laughs> she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, no, it's fine. Though. Don't, don't even worry about it. I know they're going to get me back up. It's A-OK. <laughs> She's like, what do, you, what do you mean you're fully, like, you're making, and I was like, no, 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 I'm fully dead. Like, there's no throws. Like, no. Yeah, you just you hit the damage amount of death. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm fully dead. And, like, she's never played tabletop, so whenever, like, I describe certain things, like, being able to be hit from alive to just dead and, like, no no saving throw required, she always gets, like, this <laughs> like this wide-eyed look, and it's so funny. It's one of the funniest things. Love it so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, you know, honestly, we should get Rose in on one of those one-shots if we ever do one. Yeah. It'd be fun, yeah. I love playing with her, Rose. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. She's very nervous. Oh, oh, actually, I'm I'm gonna slightly dox my girlfriend right now. So uh, <laughs> Rose has officially agreed to do a particular theme for tabletop for her first game, and oh, yeah. she didn't. She I got her I I, be, <laughs> I got her to agree to do a tabletop theme because she didn't think that it was gonna be possible. But she said she wanted to play Midwest Pokemon, where you play as the Midwest Pokemon starters. So like. If you're not familiar with that meme, uh, basically it's like armadillos, uh, fucking raccoons, like like different animals that are around the Midwest that like if Pokemon was <laughs> in real life, they'd be the starters. But like you play as the raccoon or you play as the armadillo or you play as the possum or whatever. Right. And then you just do a campaign as such. And I was like, that is fully doable. And you've already you've already agreed to it. So we're going to do that. <laughs> like 100 percent. In the words of my forefather, bet. <laughs> And then yeah. the party goes to Australia. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's suddenly a battle royale. Real Campaign <laughs> start. You are in the zoo. All the cells are open. Survive. <laughs> Survive. Remember. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh... I'm gonna play the bird. <laughs> <laughs> you step out. All we'll you just chases is- you down. <laughs> You step out of your zoo cell, all you hear is remember, no Russian. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. It's all bad. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and deafen up real quick and then do my sign offs. So I will be right back. Remember. No Russian. <laughs> oh shit. Do you actually have the model for that? No. Oh my god. Remember no Russian. Remember, no Arthur. Arthur, please. <laughs> <laughs>
We can't kill the Russians. They're going to get us to Tahiti. Tahiti. <laughs> Tahiti. The American thought we wouldn't go to Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. This time for sure, I'm going to do my sign off. So yip, yip, yip. say goodbye to my chat. Bye bye, everyone. Goodbye. goodbye, my chat. Love you all. Thank you both, chats, for being here. You're wonderful. Yeah, you too, baby. Yes, chat. I'm going to hop out of your chat. Stay beautiful. Good night, everyone. <laughs>